Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Well, we are, uh, we're doing this. <laughs> Hell yeah! I cannot believe we're doing this. I'm actually here. Welcome to the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome to the FanDuel Thunderdome. Oh, I am yeah. literally not Pat McAfee. No, you're, no, not. you're not. Football! Not. Football! Football! See, I was supposed to do the show starts now, right? You guys kind of jumped the gun. Well, well you missed the beat it goes drop, with the beat. but... It's confusing. See, know. nobody told me. This is... Anyway, I'm Ian Rappaport, <laughs> baby. Rappaport. usually Rap Rap from Sheet. NFL Network, also known as Rap Sheet, usually uh, a regular guest on the Pat McAfee Show, but instead I am invading Pat's desk. I'm going to move some shit around. Don't do mm -hmm. it. Don't do I just it. cursed for the first time on the show. <laughs> Whoa, uh, rap. Didn't mean to, um, but See. I guess that just happened, See, like yeah. a lot of other things. Whoops. So anyway... I'm hosting. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I'm taking Pat's place um, just for today or? Just today. Just I think today. just today. Just today. Well, maybe okay. next Friday too. Who knows? Whoop. Oh. Whoop. Whoop. AJ Whoop. could get Wally Pipp. Yeah, exactly. He I mean, I have watched shows where AJ's hosted. A little bit to be desired, sure. honestly. For sure. Um, no a little doubt. rough around the edges. Sure. So maybe I'm better. Um, so I think far. that's possible. Pat yeah. is going to join us in the second hour from... Dallas-ish, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Dallas. I think, the tri-state area? Yeah, outside the stadium, maybe yeah. inside the stadium. I'm not sure. I lived in Dallas for three years, and many people say they're from Dallas, and it's like, oh, really, where? And they're like, McKinney. Fort I'm like, no. Sure. Like, you're, so Pat is not in Dallas. I think he's going to be in Arlington. Okay. Which is almost Dallas. Mm. Uh, so he'll be joining us. We're also going to be joined by my good friend Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated. Here we go. To explain um, why his wife is still in my phone as sex. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Hey, that coming? Um, <laughs> it's not a sordid story, but it is a good story. Okay. So he will tell that as well as why he broke the uh, Hugh Freeze Jeez. news and why I dunked on him by breaking the Michigan starting running back being out for the season. You did. I saw that. Yeah. What's that his name? Good. Blake Corm. Oh! <laughs> well done. Well done. Good test. Wow. God, I hate that you asked that. Well, well you welcome know. to the fucking thunder, though, man. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, so we do get into a lot of weird breaking news stuff. So mm -hmm. I will address the concerns of the me not knowing who I was tweeting about yesterday. You're an I knew his name, but I wasn't sure about the spelling. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's a tough name. Well, right, Corp, because it could be Q sure. or it could be C. Right, K. K. When he's in the NFL next year, I bet you know the spelling. You're an NFL guy. I yeah. mean, there is a chance now, but considering he's having the surgery that would knock him out for the season, not the one that would bring him back for the bowl game, I'd say there's a decent chance he's coming to the NFL next year. Yeah. Good player. Mm -hmm. um, Mid-round pick, good running back, tough, tough, tough. So I had to look up the spelling, but I did have, uh, I did have the pronunciation, so good job by Where'd you. Where you go, Rep? Everybody Rep one there, huh? Proud of you, Rep. you. You're flying. Um, so anyway, we're going to have a good show, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have a good show. Um, Here we go. Happy rap. to be joined by you guys. Usually, pleasure. I talk to you guys on a delay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're talking in real life. So if I say some stuff that's really dumb, you can just interrupt me and say "shut up." Yep. Or yeah, we tried with the Dellinger thing, but uh, you know, you, it's already over now. So we'll just keep it rolling, I guess. Shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You bet. Right. You bet. Right. I thought you were just rolling right into Kanye West, Chris Paul when you said that. <laughs> but I guess. I guess that's a conversation for another. We'll time. save that later. We'll save yeah, that, we'll that, for, say later. that for a different okay, time. Perfect. I, I was sitting in my bed this morning, with getting mentally prepared to host the show, sure. which yeah. I'm still not ready for that. And I saw that Kanye West was uh, obviously trending, and I mm -hmm. saw Chris Paul was trending, mm -hmm. and I had no idea why. And then I tried to look it up, and God, that was a cesspool of terrible. Sure. Oh yeah, there was a lot of terrible there. Yeah. Um, so we'll get to that later. Yeah, okay. exactly. I'm sure the people want to know that. Yeah, uh, idea. there was a football game last night. Yes, yeah, kind of. It was. Well. Yeah. Shit kind show. of is right. Yeah. Are you a Patriots fan? Uh, no. But kind of. Ever? A little bit. Well, so I covered the Patriots for three years for the Boston yeah. Herald. Hell and yeah. Great, great, great organization. Is it better than the Globe or? Well, oh, I don't know. Have you ever seen Spotlight? Globe 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 yeah. Okay. Because that's not true. Because one of the greatest actors of our generation worked there. Who's that? Fucking Michael Keaton. Boom. 
Shout out the Boston Globe. Yeah, shout Spotlight. Out. Michael, was this in that movie, The Paper? No, no Spotlight. 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 Were they? Oh, you don't paper. watch movies. Do no, you? I watch. I've seen. The, I've seen Spotlight. Oh, it was okay. good. I watch it on a plane. Yeah, it is good. Most of my movie watching is on planes. It's about the Catholic Church. No, I watch it. It was okay. good. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Those are all the kind of movies where, like, I do this for. I mean, not this for a living, but like, I do my job for a living, where I tweet mm-hmm. about like ankles and sure. ACLs Shoulders. and stuff, and then I watch like real reporters, mm-hmm. and I'm like, maybe I should do that. Well, you mean like. Go overseas and like cover like a war correspondent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like real stuff. But then I realize who I am, and it's like not, <laughs> you know, that's not me. It's not as fun. It's not as fun, and I don't think I, you know, I try to be a good person as I can in various ways, and maybe I try to make up for it outside my stupid job that I do, where I talk about fantasy advice and sure. injuries mm-hmm. and who's getting hired and who's getting fired. Anyway, football game last night. Mm-hmm. Patriots did not win. No, they didn't. The Bills won twenty-four to ten. Josh Allen did silly, silly things on the mm-hmm. sideline. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, there was an interception overturn that I know a lot of people have some questions about. No, it wasn't a pick. So. Uh, what did you guys think? Uh, I mean, it was a shit show. Uh, first off, obviously, the boost did not hit. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. We put it together in the morning. I thought, and when I say we, I mean me and my brain and all the voices in my head. Okay. And we thought that it was going to be good. It wasn't. We were close. Not that close for some people, but, you know, six yards of Ramondre Stevenson. And who knew Josh Allen wasn't going to run the ball? So, obviously, I apologize. Next boost, I'm sure whoever takes the reins will do much sure. better than me because, you know, I'm not a boost better, I guess, is what we've learned. I didn't hit any touchdown parlays or any bets yesterday, just for the record. But I'm more <laughs> of a plus 10,000, plus 15,000 sure. guy. But, mm-hmm. no, the game was tough. Yeah, uh, you expected after the – Marcus Jones, Patriots touchdown, you know, the kick returner defensive back. They're using him on offense. It was like, okay, here we go. The Patriots are going to kind of, you know, change it up. They are saving some stuff for this game specifically because it's such a big game. Um, But after this touchdown here, yeah, the game was over. Uh, I believe the – Bills, I think, were like 20-20 to 20 on third down. Patriots could they not punt? get off the field. They punted they after, did. They did. after six quarters or, you know, 16 quarters, whatever. Uh, it got mentioned a lot. Did about you, uh, yeah, but got mentioned wrong. Did you guys catch that? No. No, I'm glad it did, though. I'm glad you caught it. What'd they say? So it was basically like, um, you know, this Bills punter uh, was obviously, you know, the punter last year when the Bills punted zero times against the Patriots, but he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. well, well. This is kind of interesting. What's up with that, it's huh? Kind of weird. I don't know. That is kind of weird. Al was trending this morning. Yeah. yeah. Because of that? Because of some stuff similar. What other what stuff? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know about that. But also, I mean, the the big, t- at least for someone who's not a Pats fan or a Bills fan who kind of just, you know, tried to stay awake during the game. Fair. And then you have all the stuff with uh, Mac Jones this morning. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and Patricia's trending. Do you think... Him motherfucking Patricia on the sidelines. That's something that's been brewing or under the surface for a while now, and it just kind of took a big spotlight moment against a division rival for all that stuff to really kind of come to the surface. You know, I, I'm I'm sort of I don't love putting the spotlight on sideline things. I mean, look at my guy Mac. He is yeah, he's got he was amped. He yeah, was he was amped. very. I don't. You know, it's <clears throat> it's like I kind of feel weirdly, guys. Like. That's us peeking into someone's office, right? Mm-hmm, so, like, mm-hmm. if someone freaks out on the sideline, it's like, you know, like, if I move Pat's shit around and he comes in and yells at me, like, I don't want the camera on that. Sure, sure. right. That's private business. Um, this felt a little more, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was nothing. Like, has it been brewing? There's been frustration with the offense. They haven't been as productive as they want. Third down, red zone certainly haven't mm-hmm, been as productive. For sure. And I think the choice of Matt Patricia as essentially play caller, offensive coordinator, is probably going to go down as one of the most debated of Bill Belichick's tenures. And, like, there is a chance it gets better. My guess would be Belichick takes over the offense a little more, as he sometimes does when things aren't going great. Oh, I hope you're right. But, like, of all the symbols of the Patriots season, don't you think that this will be one of them? Oh, yeah, absolutely, especially with the fallout. Like, as a Patriots fan looking at it, yeah, the offense has had some good games. They've had some bad games. Obviously, last night was a terrible game. You go to last week, though, and they were unbelievable. So it's weird how big of a difference 
that can change. Uh, but it's hard to imagine Bill completely getting rid of Patricia. Like, a lot of Patriots fans are pointing immediately to Bill O'Brien. Like, okay, Bill O'Brien, he's in Bama. He's been there for a few years. They're not happy he with said, him there. Yeah, either. they're not yeah. happy with him there. He yeah. said he wanted to, <clears throat> you know, come back to the NFL and would be open to it. Uh, that would be a dream for, I think, a lot of Patriots fans. But if you're – Belichick, one, do you ever do what everyone points to? And two, is after one year the thought, like, okay, we tried this, it didn't work? Or is it, yeah, well, he's, he's got a year under his belt. He's going to get better next year. We can get w- more weapons with all the cap space. It just sucks that the season's over at week 12. I mean, that, that's the real bummer. I don't think so. I don't think it's over because okay. I kind of feel We're like still I do playoff with... Line, right? You're still What's in the that? hunt. Yeah. Still 500, yeah. It's playoffs. They can still make the playoffs. I mean, they're not winning the Super Bowl. No. no. So, technically, season... Is it's over. Kind of exactly. Over. But, I mean, tell you what, you get in the tournament, anything can happen. Yeah, right. you got to go to the dance. I agree. And uh, as a Patriots fan, it's tough because of <clears> the <throat> expectation that it's now just getting the playoffs, not like, okay, season starts in the AFC Championship. But it does feel like there isn't much hope with the – core that we have right now like not too many great young players not too many like standout <laughs> Stefan Diggs-esque weapons like we don't yeah. have that one player I think Lombardi might have said that yesterday how they don't have that like one guy who really you know jumps off the screen when you're watching but again you know you saw him last year Bill him being Bill uh, in the offseason, use all that space and actually go and get guys. And, you know, some of them haven't panned out. Kendrick Bourne barely gets any snaps. I don't really understand why or how that happens because he was the best receiver last year. Is John uh, healthy? John who's healthy. healthy. Again, not, yeah, another guy that doesn't get many snaps. I think he was actually the first signing of that, entire, mm-hmm. that entire run. God, that was such a crazy – that was like the most optimistic couple of days in the last two years. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what I keep thinking about, and this is like, in the grand scheme of things, the Mac Jones sideline sort of outburst. And, like, Mac is an emotional dude, mm-hmm. and I don't care that much if quarterbacks yell at people. No. Like, it's sort of whatever. I, like, I like it. It's like, hey, this guy wants to fucking yeah. win. He's not just like, okay, right. whatever. Right. So, like, I'm not bothered by that. I'll tell you what, the, maybe the most, like, indelible thing to me was it's a 14-point game. They got two minutes to oh, go. Oh, yeah. You know where I'm going. Yeah, they, no they didn't call any of their timeouts. So, like, we can talk about what we saw and, like, my opinion on the Patriots' offense. Like, it's not that important in the real world. Like, I'm interested in it. Maybe my family. Maybe you guys. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Interested. Um, Thank you. Bill Belichick's opinion means more. Mm-hmm. The fact that he didn't use his timeouts, that he was like, I think we're good, was a little bit alarming. Because yeah. doesn't that tell you what he thinks? Absolutely. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Where, like, you know, even if we're down by uh, 10 points, like, if we're down by 10, is he still doing that? Or is there some sort of, like, hey, we might go down and right. kick a field goal and then onside kick? Like, there was no sense of, yeah, maybe we should, you know, get the ball back. But that's how dominant the Bills were last night. It's like there was no, there was no point in that game aside from that Marcus Jones touchdown, which was in the you know first quarter, mm-hmm. where it was like, hey, we might have a chance here. Right after the Bills marched down and Stephon Diggs scored his touchdown, it was like, oh, okay, this game is over. Like they do not have a chance. And it, a lot of people uh, were pointing to this today. Stephon Diggs also catching the ball and staring at Jonathan Jones in the end zone before <laughs> mm-hmm. the play is even over. It's just like the most like that right yeah. there is so disrespectful. <laughs> mm-hmm. It hurts, and especially when you're doing it in the red jersey. He's everyone's juice stuff. You can see the fans on the standing up in the stands. But after this, there's no hope, and I think that's the real problem. And it goes to Mac jo- Jones's, you know, whole entire, you know, yelling at the I team. Mean, look at this. Yeah, Jesus. this one too. Same thing as Dawson Knox in the yeah. playoffs last year to start the game. Uh, but yeah, it it is what it is. Um, but for Belichick, yeah, I've never seen the white flag be raised like that ever. Um, and he referenced the Ravens game with how he did that against them. Mac gets hurt yeah. at the end of the game because they got the ball back and he didn't want to put right. the team in that sort of situation. So I can I can see how that makes sense. Um, it's also impossible to be uh, a fan and think like, oh, well, if we get the ball back, we can throw a deep ball and score a touchdown right away. Why aren't we doing this? Like there's no, there's no hope of that. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's a two-score game. There's no hope of like, hey, quick touchdown, let's do this. Honestly, the last time I can think of it happening was uh, last year against the Cowboys. Trevon Diggs gets a pick six. Mm-hmm. Next play for the offense, uh, Kendrick Bourne goes 75 yards. But Kendrick Bourne doesn't play anymore. So it, it's just – it's 
pretty wild as a fan to watch and not understand what's going on and why there hasn't been a change. But again, you just fall back on his Bill Belichick. So, and I don't know how long that's going to last for a lot of fans. I will go 0 and 17 with Bill Belichick and be yeah. perfectly fine with it because we still have Bill. But I don't know. There, there's a lot of people pissed off about it. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of how I feel. I'm more of the like, as long as Bill's there, they're going to be fine. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it was there was some alarming things, and like I don't know where that's going. And I'll tell you this: like we've known the Bills were good. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And maybe they're maybe they're sort of back to where they were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there was definitely a moment where people would say things to me like, "Do you think the Bills are going to make the playoffs?" And I'd be like, "Huh? Yeah, what like, are we talking about?" Well, yeah, because there was. A week where they what were t- was a tie with the Patriots or were they were third in the division a couple of weeks? Yeah, up, they right? went from what being like the one <clears throat> seed or the right. two seed to being like you know six or seven and like on the cusp of not mm-hmm. making it in the AFC. They're it, good, man. Yeah, and they're still in the wild card. Well, and it was also like you know I mean you look at the score twenty four ten and that feels a lot cl- like that is not indicative of no. how <laughs> that that game was a blow like I mean obviously not a blowout because they only won by two scores it felt like it but Connor's of. right you know like after that after the Pats scored their first touchdown and then the Bills got on their next possession and just marched down the field methodically it was like oh this game's over and you know I mean it, it seemed like the kind of thing where if they wanted to like they I mean you know Josh Allen fumbles before half on that like it, it could have gotten a lot uglier than it was but even at 24 10 like it feels like the Bills won by 50 yeah yeah, that's what I felt like too. I don't know. I mean, it's, we'll see. And there's some, there's some. Fun. I mean, we'll get to the, some of the games this weekend uh, a little bit later. But there's some fun stuff that needs to unfold in that division, including the Miami Dolphins, who yeah. are awesome. And I have no earthly idea what they're going to do is, against the 49ers. Is uh, Armstead playing this weekend? You know, Armstead is playing. Here we okay. go. It's been a minute. Um, he's dealt with some some weird stuff. I think he had plantar fasciitis, then like a sort of a hairline fracture type deal. Mm. I thought it was a peck, right? I mm-hmm. thought it was a peck. Was it not? I thought it was the a mo- foot. The most recent one, I believe, was a peck. The most he, recent one he, was a peck. Okay, yeah, there you he go. He did have a foot earlier in the season. He I think he's got two of them, but I think there was a foot injury. But, yes, um, he has said he's playing, and I think that will help. Um, if I screwed up the injury, uh, that will be an unforced error, and I apologize to we the We do fans. it all the time. It's, it's nice. Yeah, it's yeah okay. don't worry, Rashi. It's okay. This isn't the insider for you guys get everything right all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that, that definitely happens. On the made-up network. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. The Fast huh? Network? The fake Network? Did you guys like my T-shirt, by the way? Did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Very sweet. Very surprised you're not wearing it today. Yeah, pretty neat. I thought about that. I thought about wearing that T-shirt, and I thought about wearing my own T-shirt with my face on it. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Which is in the store over... over. It's uh. It's over... It's so through one of those doors, I think. Yeah, brick and mortars. Yeah. Um, it's around somewhere. here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I saw the, the cashier. Store.patmaffshow.com is, uh, if, you wanna, if you don't want to come to the brick and mortar location. Right. Uh, right. Yes, mm-hmm. You can order from there. Just to be fair, even right? So um, I thought about wearing that. My Don't wife suggested come to the office. She was like, That's right. Let me not. reiterate: do not come to the office. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Please. Oh yeah, don't come to the office. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. No, it's right. heavily guarded. Wait, right. so, is he talking to me? Uh, no, he's like, talking. No, this is everybody. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So depending on how today goes, he might be talking. How, to many, you how much coffee are you drinking a day? How much coffee does an average insider drink in a day? Okay, good question. That is a good question. Um, I. I have two different kinds of coffee settings. I have one where it's half a pot, okay. which is basically two Yeti-sized tumblers, like okay. the, the ones you guys have sure. over there. Growler. Gra- uh, well, growler's, growler's bigger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Growler's like a gallon, I think. Oh, okay. I have no idea what it is. Just a cool term. <laughs> you've drank from a growler before. Surely you've drank from so. a growler. Yeah, Ice cold big. beer out of a growler, Is it usually right? just straight from the keg? Uh, yeah, usually. Yeah, that makes sense. So usually, on regular days, I would say half a pot. And then on days where I'm on Good Morning Football through Total Access, which is 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., mm-hmm. probably a full pot. Okay. Um, what about trade deadline? Yeah, like free agency weekend. Oh, yeah, it, we're week. talking more, more than a pot. Yeah. So, like, I go through the pot. I'll come up at, like, 2, and I'm like, do we have any coffee? And it'll you, be, like, just shot. myself standing there. Uh-huh. So I'm like, all right, I guess i got to make a new one. Um, <laughs> Jeez. And I'll make Off-life. it. It's terrible. It's terrible. Have mm-hmm. you ever had your phone uh, hours screen time on, or do you just keep that off just for safekeeping? Some idiot <laughs> thought this was a good idea <laughs> to tell us <clears throat> how long we were on our phones. It's messed up. That's a, I'm, like, offended by that. Yeah, I never want to know. Like, every, like, Sunday morning at 9, Correct. I get a text that's like, hey, you're way too – stare at this thing way too much. Like, mm-hmm. go talk to your family. And I'm like – Wow, 17 hours a day. That's really great. <laughs> oh, that's, that's electric. That's, is that what it is you no, say? No, but it's a <laughs> lot. It's a lot. And then I'll go, like, on vacation or something, and I'll go, like, to ski, and it'll be, like, 
you only spent, you know, your, your screen time is down 20%. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is great. Then next Sunday, it's like 99% on your phone. I'm like, all right, now I feel like a total jerk. So well, I mean, it's your job. The phone, the, whoever created screen time doesn't know that that's your job, obviously. They just think you're another guy with an iPhone. That's right. Okay, rap. What and, would and you're you, not. What would you be doing normally on a Friday? Like, when did you stop going? Because I saw Garofolo did a hit from, uh, like, he was at the game last night, I think. Yeah. Like, when did you stop doing Thursday night football? I mean, do you still go to those games? I feel like I, I rarely see you on location anymore. And what, on an average Friday, what are you doing? Because usually, yeah. I mean, you, you join us every once in a while on Friday, but usually we're getting you on Monday or right. Tuesday, you right. know, kind of recapping the weekend. Um, first, do we have, first of all, do we have our guest? We do. All right. Put a butt, put a, put put a pin, pin in that. Put a pin in that. There you go, rap. Thank you. No, I was, I was going to, I was going to say arrow, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, like is the arrow here? Anyway, uh, on this Feel Good Friday where I am feeling very good uh, pretending to host the show, we are joined by my good friend, <laughs> Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated, who is, I told you to look nice. Yeah, Ross! Hey, Ross. Ross. Woo. This is as nice as I can look. Look at the background. We have a train. It's a train right here. Isn't That's that nice? Look train. at the train. I do love trains. Anyway. Ross is a writer for Sports Illustrated. Uh, he is someone I've known for a very long time. Um, he was one of the doofuses on the student paper when I was covering Mississippi State. Oh! Um, <laughs> made a career of himself. Uh, breaks a bunch of news, including yeah. dunking on everyone when Hugh Freeze got hired. Uh, Ross, welcome. What's going on? Welcome, Ross. Welcome, Ross. Good Not morning, much. Ross. Just got to... Uh, hey, guys. Just got to lovely Atlanta for the SEC championship game. And... Uh, yeah, we go, uh, we go way, 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 way back, huh? We do. Um, you're going to have to pep it up a little bit. This is a high-energy situation. Um, <laughs> well, ask so about we the phone. A, right, guys? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, come on, Ross. Oh, yeah. Here you go. It's need championship weekend. Need a little more. Uh, first I need of all, half a pot of coffee that you talked about. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. Um, we got a big slate of college football games this Saturday. I want to get to some other stuff that you've reported on, including the expansion, which I think is going to be really good. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Take me through this weekend a little bit. What are we looking forward to? And for you, like, what's the most important thing that's going to come out of it? Well, you know, unfortunately, it's kind of anticlimactic. Um, the one big game that I think could impact the playoff is tonight, uh, Friday night in, in Las Vegas at the Pac-12 Championship. Uh, USC will play Utah. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that could really, really shake up the, the top four um, for the playoff announcements on Sunday. So if, you, so if USC wins, um, I think they're in, and everything pretty much stays the same. Uh, I think if they lose, Ohio State gets in probably. Um, hmm. But the other three are kind of set. Now, they're not necessarily set seeding-wise, but I think they're in. I think Michigan, I think Georgia, and I think – uh, TCU, if they all if they all win, they're in. If they all lose, they're probably in. Um, if they some all would lose, debate they're probably that in. about TCU, yeah. but wow. yeah, that's the situation we're in right now. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot. They're the only the last three undefeated teams. So um, you know, everybody else has one loss. A lot, most teams have two or more losses. So that's the situation we're in. It kind of all comes down to that USC Utah game. It's either USC gets in or Ohio State gets in. If USC loses, some people would say that TCU needs to win. I really don't think so. I, I think the seeding would change if they lose. They would be four seed or something. But um, I think the, the top three right now are in. Isn't this weird? Like, shouldn't it be more exciting? Cool. I hate to say this, but shouldn't it be more exciting? Oh. Well, in two years, we're going to get there. I think if the expanded playoff, obviously right now we have four teams, and we'll have 12 in an expanded playoff starting in 2024. And if you looked at this weekend – in an expanded playoff. But if it existed now, all of these games would matter, right? Pretty much like six of the 10 championship games would impact the field because in a 12 team playoff, obviously you have more teams, but also you have the four first round buys that can only go to conference champions. So all these conference championship games are kind of a, uh, you know, We'll, we'll get you a first round bye if you win a lot a lot of these and a lot of teams in these conference championship games will get in or working their would would work their way into the field if they win these games. So right now when most of these games don't really matter to get in the field, maybe matters with seeding. In a twelve team playoff, number one, it definitely matters with seeding and getting a bye. 
And number two, some of these teams could punch their ticket to get in. So you talked about the the expanded playoff, and obviously that was sort of the – well, first of all, how long have you – you know, for those who don't know, you obviously, you, you know, you cover all the storylines of college football, which I feel like has been dominated by either – realignment or expanded playoffs how much time have you spent covering the expanded playoffs and what was your reaction when it finally 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 went down i guess yesterday i don't know what i can say on this show as far as curse words whatever you want you can say let, it rip. let it rip but it is the most asinine thing i have ever covered in my career Whoa. it's been 18 months that's of not a curse pettiness well, you know, it's close enough. It's I didn't want to get in trouble. No, um, no. But uh, so it, it, it has been 18 <laughs> months of this. So um, in June 2021 is when a subcommittee of the 10 commissioners, about four of them, got together for two years, starting in actually 2019. For two years, created this model, studied it, you know, looked at over 100 different models, formats, and uh, created this model and presented it in June 2021, 18 months ago. And it has taken that long for it to get approved. Uh, and a lot of it is because of something you just mentioned, right? Conference realignment. Um, the, 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 uh, you know, there were a lot of people angry at the SEC for taking Oklahoma and Texas last summer and angry at the Big Ten for taking USC uh, and UCLA this past summer. And that just created a fractured room of commissioners who just, for whatever reason, didn't want to agree um, and it, it's just been this long, awful process. And finally, we were waiting this last couple of weeks on the Rose Bowl um, uh, because the contract with ESPN, in order to, to expand the playoffs early, the contract would have to be broken. And the contract is with ESPN in the six Legacy Bowl. So you had to get everybody on board. Everybody was on board except the Rose Bowl until earlier this week when they decided to sign the amended contract and be a part of this thing. So um, it's, it's been a long, long process. I had a commissioner tell me um, earlier this week, he was describing this whole process. And again, as I talked about, a lot of folks in that commissioner room were really angry at the SEC and Commissioner Greg Sankey uh, last summer. And it, it was kind of a purposeful delay uh, just to kind of stick it to them, uh, a lot of people believe. That's and one of the commissioners earlier this week told me, uh, when I asked him, I said, like, can you describe this process to me, like this 18 months and this grinding, awful process? And he, he said, well, I know that a big portion of that 18 months was the Greg Sankey is the devil period that we had to get over. You know, So that, that just gives you an idea of that room and how fractured uh, it was for a long time and, and still is. Uh, we got a question from the boys. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Ross Raps, you just forgot my name, obviously, <laughs> as you can see. But, uh, what? That's not true. It's okay. My name is basically boys. Uh, Ross. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to go around. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I'm just, you know, I'm just messing around. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about. Tone, go uh, ahead. De thank you. Uh, there's been a lot of talk <laughs> about <laughs> Deion Sanders moving. Uh, could you see him uh, leaving Jackson? And if he did, would it be for a job that's, you know, not to kind of dump on these teams? So would, would it be for a bigger job than Colorado or uh, USF? Or would he actually go to one of those places before going to maybe an SEC, Big 12 type of school? Well, you know, I, I think. Uh, you know, any coach wants to move up, right, up the ladder, and Dion is 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 the same. Um, you know, when he got the Jackson State before he got the Jackson State job, he interviewed with some FBS programs, and then after first year uh, Jackson State, he interviewed with more. Um, so he he's interviewed with ads at Arkansas, at TCU. I think he talked to Florida State, maybe Colorado State Miss, at some point. Um, so uh, maybe Ole Miss. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's talked to a lot of people. I think he was the most serious of a candidate at, uh, at TCU. And, and um, I, I, you talk to ADs yeah. who interviewed him, and it was you, they're blown away. I mean, he comes in. He's incredibly organized. The, the, he has blown these ADs off of their feet. And so it's kind of only a matter of time. If he kept winning, you know, it was only a matter of time for him to get some pretty big offers. And he obviously – came out, which is a little rare, right, for a coach to come out and say, I was offered this job. But it's a little window into Dion. Uh, he's different. He's, he's going to be unique. Um, you're not going to control Dion, right? If you're an AD, he's going to do what he wants, say what he wants. 
He's going to post what he wants. That's how Dion is. And, it, and you know, I think he is going to move somewhere. It's hard for me to think that a guy in the SWAC would turn down a Power 5 job offer. You know, and we know that he has one in Colorado. So, you know, there are all signs kind of – or a lot of signs kind of point to him going west. But, you know, Dion, you never know. There are dominoes falling all the time on this coaching thing. A lot of them will fall this weekend and have fallen this week. Um, but certainly he's in it at, at USF and very much in it at Colorado. So I'd, I'd expect for him to be on the move. Ty, go ahead. Yeah, Ross, you were one of the guys who broke the news on Hugh Freeze, and then right after that, you know, there was kind of a lot of blowback, especially with them, Oof. you know, shitting the bed on their previous hire, and then he's got to, you know, relinquish his social media and all that kind of stuff. Do you think they think they found the guy for the future, or are we looking at something where it's, you know, there's potential that he's going to be out of there in a couple years as well. And I don't know how deep your ties are in the Big Ten, but have you heard anything? What are the odds that Iowa is going to fire Brian Ferentz? <laughs> <laughs> don't. Well, that last question, don't count on that one. Don't be betting on that, Jesus, you know. I'm not. Um, <laughs> yeah, dad, dad is, dads, it. Don't, dads don't fire their sons very often, and I, I don't expect – I don't necessarily expect that to happen. So uh, on the first question – Freeze and Auburn, uh, for you know, a lot of reasons, uh, seem like seems like a a perfect marriage in a long term one. Um, if he wins enough on the field, and obviously if off the field things go better than they did at Ole Miss, um, it does seem like something that's going to last a long time. I I visited Hugh a couple years ago down in Liberty, and he told me him and his wife uh, had planned to retire at a lake near Auburn. Uh, his daughter attended Auburn and still lives there. Uh, the whole family's moving there. Um, wow. So it is. it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and there's, there's a reason that this one, I think, will work out, and it's because it does feel like there's a connection there uh, between that place in Hugh and, of course, his old – his best friend in coaching, Gus Malzahn, worked there for years um, and actually wanted to hire Hugh about four years ago, and the SEC office kind of, you know, Maybe you should wait, kind of thing, and, and wow. uh, so they waited. I did not know and, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so Hugh was, and Hugh Hugh's been on the record, I believe. He told me about it two years ago that it was Auburn, Alabama, and Tennessee all wanted to hire him after Ole Miss fired him a year later. I think it was 17, 2017. and the SEC office. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying Greg Sinke said no, right? And I don't think Greg Sinke calls an AD and says no, you can't hire this person. But I think he. Uh, sent them maybe a memo with outlining some things of, if you do this, here's what you will need to, to do. It's, it was basically, it wasn't a NCAA show cause. It was almost like a conference show cause. Like, you have to show me why you are hiring him. So that's kind of died down. And it, and it makes a lot of sense, by the way, because during that time, Ole Miss was still on probation. I don't mm -hmm. think any commissioner would have liked uh, a, a conference to welcome back in a coach, even as an assistant, when – they put a conference kind of team on uh, on probation. So Ole Miss is off probation. The path is somewhat clear now. Don't go ahead, uh, Ross. Before we uh, pick these games this weekend, there's some some injuries. Uh, Jane Daniels, Quentin Johnson, Grayson McCall. Uh, I think Boise's got a running back. Toledo's got a quarterback. Maybe what do we need to know injury wise before these games this this Saturday? Uh, you know, I think Jamie Chadwell who. He's on the move too, I believe, as coach at Coastal Carolina. But I think he said earlier this week there, you know, it was going to be like a game time decision uh, for Grayson. Uh, you know, they were they were hoping that he was going to be ready this week. He's been out for I think three, four weeks maybe, and they were really hoping he was going to be ready. It sounded like it was still real iffy. Uh, so maybe it's going to be one of those things of coming out before the game on Saturday and seeing how things feel. Brian Kelly said earlier this week, Jaden Daniels is a go, and, and he will play for LSU uh, in the SEC championship game. What That's about fun. Quentin Johnson? Sorry. Uh, don't – don't know about the other ones. Okay. You, you caught me on that. You're lucky I knew those. You're lucky I knew sure. those two here in the silly season, where all I'm spending my time in is seeing what coach yeah. is doing what and where they're going. 
Yeah, Ross, uh, you said all the top three teams are, you know, set. But if one of them were to lose and then USC obviously wins, are they going to drop down to four to play Georgia? Or do you think, you like, the one, two, three, four are kind of set how it is uh, whether TCU or Michigan or Georgia lose? I think there could be some movement in seeding. Here's the thing, though. Um, if USC loses, uh, then – you bump out USC, like I said, and then Ohio State probably gets in. The thing you want to avoid is an Ohio State-Michigan rematch in a first round, oh. in a, you know, in, a, in the semifinal um, after they've just played. However, according to the CFP bylaws or whatever you want to call it, the committee can't is not supposed to look at that. They're supposed to just see based on ranking. But for me, I, they've got to look at that. So they've got to arrange it in a way where you don't get those two teams to play again. Um, so I, I think you got to keep that in mind as far as how the seeding goes. Mm-hmm. You know, but if US, if they all, if the top three win and USC loses, I think Ohio State comes in at four. So you'd have Georgia and Ohio State, TCU and Michigan. It would make perfect sense. Georgia and Ohio State would be here in Atlanta, and TCU and Michigan would be playing the Fiesta Bowl uh, in the semifinal over there. But let's say TCU loses, which of the three maybe is the most likely. Um, I think you just, in USC wins, I think you just switch those, right? You might just switch those. And then you'd have Michigan and USC in the Fiesta. You've had Georgia and TCU uh, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, Ross, two more things to you and really appreciate you joining us. Um, I would say, first of all, maybe the most important question as we move forward with playoff expansion those jobs that the bowl uh, CEO guys have where you get to make a million bucks, you wear one of those weird jackets, yeah. you don't really do anything except host one event a year, but you get to make a lot of money. Like, those guys are safe, right? Like, we're not going to have to worry about that? Uh, no. I, what do you mean safe? You mean, they, you mean like, because of the expansion? Like yeah, are they the okay? Bowl? I mean, are those yeah. – I don't want those guys yeah. heading to the unemployment line <laughs> sure. have to get Good real point. jobs. <laughs> Very nice yeah, point. I know, I know. I think that uh, – the, most of the bowls are okay for a little while. Um, you know, the bowls have been incorporated in the expansion. Um, you know, they're, they're, the first round games will be hosted on campus. There'll be four first. They'll be hosted at the better seed. Quarterfinals and semifinals will be hosted by the bowls in a rota- six bowl rotation. So certainly if you're one of those six bowls, you're in a, leg- a legacy bowl, and it's the same as the bowls are now, the ones that are incorporated in the in the CFP now. So it's the Fiesta, it's the Rose Bowl, Why? it's the Sugar, Why? it's the Cotton, Why? it's the Orange. Why? You know, all those guys. They're they're Peach. It's they're they're Why? safe. They're fine. The other bowls might have some concerns, especially oh, no. the lower tier bowls. They might have some concerns going forward. I know gasp, right? No, my God. But they they Not could the have some uh, they could have some issues. Mayo bowl. What about the Mayo bowl? Duke's Mayo oh, bowl? Bahamas. The Mayo okay. bowl. The Mayo bowl has. Such a great brand. They've done no, such a great not. job. Yeah, They're does. safe, man. They're safe, oh man. God. Cheese and bowl. Cheese they and pour bowl. mayo in the coach, man. Everybody loves the mayo bowl. Yeah, we wow. do. True. We do. Cheese and bowl, safe. There's Bahamas some Bahamas bowl, poinsettia bowl. Mm. You know, I did this. Alamo bowl. What's the Shreveport bowl? I did that two years in Monica a row. Which Clark. one is that? Independence bowl. The We're Independence okay. That's bowl. okay there. Oh yeah. Mm, maybe. Oh, <laughs> no. Got it. Yeah. Um, last thing. Um, you have a very successful wife who is much better at her job than you are at your job. Um, she is currently in my phone as sex. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa, please explain whoa, to the people why. So my wife is, uh, is a political reporter. We, that's why we live in DC. She, she just got done a couple after a couple years of uh, being a white house correspondent. She's now an editor for the Hill. Uh, Ooh. yes, she's much better at her job than I am and, and much better, uh, in, in every facet, a much better That's cook, true. a much better person, sure. all right. of them really. Yeah. She checks all, right. all, all the boxes. She is in Ian's phone as just, yeah, three, three letters, S-E-X. Uh, and she was put into Ian's phone, I think, during a night of uh, drinking out in Starkville, Mississippi, right. while we were in college and Ian covered Mississippi State. Uh, and I think there were some things discussed during that night uh, about, um, at the time, you know, we were just girlfriend and boyfriend just started dating. And, you know, you know what you do when you just start dating. I mean, there's really only one thing you do. So, What's uh, that? so oh. she was plugged into Ian's phone as sex. There you go. So wow. no, nobody told me. So my phone was just sitting there. My phone would never be out of my reach now, but then it was. My phone was just sitting there, takes my phone, puts it in as sex. Nobody tells me. I'm sitting in my house by myself, my like 
stupid Sarkville apartment. Gonna call this Whoa. number? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Sex yeah. called Here me. Here we go. I got a call from Sex for the first like time ever. Greatest moments of my life. <laughs> Here we go. That's awesome. I'm like, oh you've been God. waiting all your life to get a call from Sex. Haven't you? <laughs> Is that what happened with you, Freeze, too? Or? Huh? Oh. 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 oh, that's actually a pretty good line. Um, Ross, go away. Um, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Thanks for not dressing up. This is a classy establishment. Next time, throw on a collar. Yeah. Um, but thank you for your time. Enjoy right. uh, whatever you're going to do this weekend, and I will look forward to dunking on you with college football news in the next coming days. Hell yeah. Perfect. All right, guys. See y'all. Yeah! Woo! Yeah. Good guy. It's good. So you guys were in college at the same time? No. I was – when I was 24, uh, I moved down to cover Mississippi State – uh, knowing no one, literally no one, yeah. had my had a red uh, Ford Mustang convertible. That's that awesome! Whoa. Whoa. And a photo of that, and because of Harvard, where was, you went to school, I went to Columbia. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, go Lions! It was uh, it was an automatic. Whoa! Oh, yeah, it was cool. wow. really cool. Damn! Because yep, I can't drive stick because I'm a dork. Um, yeah, it's a lost art. Yeah, my wife. Can, anyway, I'm not gonna. Whatever. Of course she, she can. can. She, she can, can do drive. everything. Though. She can drive stick. My wife can do literally everything. Yes. Well, she has to because you know you I don't mean, do anything but look at your phone and drink coffee. <laughs> yeah. Right, and beer and booze. What? Right. Um, I had some great whiskey last night at the uh, place that I was staying. Oh, High yeah. West has a new uh, like put it out once a year. It's really fantastic. Did you stay here? Uh, I stayed at the I at the Ironworks. No, but last night you were, you yeah. were here last night. Yeah, it's great. Good place. Beautiful. I was. I told you I was getting mentally prepared. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just watching the football game and thinking of what I would talk to you guys Just about. Just sweating. Could be anything. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, wait, locked, so when you got into insidership, you said, hey, f- the place I want to start as an insider is... Starkville, Miss- Miss- Stark Vegas. I didn't even want to be in... I didn't even know that insider was a thing. All True. I wanted to be was a magazine writer or, like, columnist. Like, I thought that was the greatest you job ever. You saw Almost yeah. Famous and were like, hey, I want to do this. I, Literally, what was your dream job? Rolling Stone or <laughs> astronaut? Um, no, dream. T- my dream job was to go to be like Gary Smith for Sports Illustrated, okay. who wrote just Love would Gary. spend like three months on a feature, mm-hmm. which seemed like the yeah. greatest thing ever. Or Rick Riley, who has sort of become a joke now, but mm-hmm. in his time was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Absolutely wanted to be that. Dog. And then I read like actual good report, good writers like Wright Thompson and Kent Babb, and was like, I can't do that. Like, these guys are way better. That's- yeah. So. so you decided to just start calling people and asking them yeah. stuff? Yes. If that's um, how you met Ross, you, you just... So anyway, yeah. So I was at Mississippi State. Uh, he was the... I was 24. He was like 20 or 21. I think he was like the sports editor of the Mississippi State student cool. newspaper. Oh. But he worked a lot. Like every time I was at practice, he was at practice. He's an idiot. I'm kind of an idiot. Sure. sure. Um, you know, could have... You guys both like sex, obviously. Obviously, yep. <laughs> Not horse. <laughs> <And> drinking. <laughs> Yep. Uh, well, just, drinking, maybe. I was maybe. gonna say because yeah. he, like, he he has the most ambiguous age ever. I was gonna say either he could be your age or he could be like twenty two. Yeah. yeah, it's the hairline. That's maybe. why I told him to dress up. Yeah, that's part of it. You you have no idea, but you know, it's a good it's a good look. He gets to play both ends of the sword. That's true, actually. Yeah, you know, he can. Of course, he has a wife, lot. so it doesn't matter. But yeah, in politics, nonetheless. Yeah, it's a tough game. There was some breaking news while we were on that call. What was it? Fucking uh, Naj is going to play Sunday against the Falcons. Nice. Um, really? Joe Mixon's still in concussion protocol. I don't know if you knew that. Hmm. Did uh, they list if Mixon practiced fully today? Zach Taylor said the team is taking on a 12-hour by 12-hour basis. How does that make sense? Not minute by minute? No, 12-hour hour hour. Uh, by 12-hour. 12 by 12. Hmm. Okay. Mike McDaniel said Teron Armstead will practice on a limited basis today. Okay. Seriously? Mm-hmm. See, that's actually really interesting because... And Drew Brees is, Brees is dead because he got struck by lightning. <laughs> oh, man. I have so many thoughts on Drew Brees <laughs> not getting stuck by lightning. So that's by all lightning. the breaking news that happened while we oh, were shit. on the phone. See, this is like... You guys ask about my weird life. Like, we had a nice conversation with my friend Ross. I thought that was pretty fruitful. Yeah, sure. Was awesome. And like six different things happened. Sure. Or I was kind of like, ah. Like, missed all of it. Yeah. Yeah, you did, didn't you? How pissed are you? I'm a, no, None I mean, of it's No huge. one else bro- – the real problem is, like, if I – like, last night I had no Wi-Fi on my uh, – on the plane, so I was watching The Watcher. Have you guys seen this? That's uh, the Bobby show. Cannavale. Yeah. Who's that? That's the lead? Yep. Mm-hmm. Is real creepy. 
So yeah. I've heard. I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can watch the rest of it. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. I, that's what, like what happened with me in the Dahmer series. You like, didn't finish I, it? No, I couldn't do it. After the second episode, I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I just can't do this shit. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Rap, you shouldn't feel bad. Like, Naj broke the news himself. Zach Taylor broke the news about oh, okay. Joe Mix. There you go. Okay. How many of those... Lightning uh, broke the news about fucking Joe right, right. mm-hmm. Yeah. How that? many times has that happened, though, where you'll get something from a source, and then, you know, maybe it breaks later that day, or the wrong thing breaks? Like, do you rip that person to shreds, or go um, poop out their house or something? <laughs> What happens, what happens a lot is I'll, like, you know, you're chasing something, you're chasing something, and then someone will be like, all right, you know, you're right, you can, <clears throat> you can go with this, this person's out. And then you'll look on Twitter and you'll see beat writers be like, oh, this coach is walking to the podium. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay. So they gave me a little heads up, yeah. knowing the coach is then going to go say it. Like, that mm-hmm. happens a bunch. Friday injury stuff, a lot of times it's the coaches kind of announcing. Because mm-hmm. um, what I do on Fridays is basically like, I, you know, I get up at like 5.30, I'm on Good Morning Football, and after Good Morning Football at like 9.15, I have my big list of possible topics for Sunday, and I just make calls. And I call literally everyone, and most times nobody answers. Mm. When somebody answers on like Friday at 10, I'm like, God, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, Let's thank go. you for answering. Good day, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what generally happens is I make all the calls, I finish my day at like 3 or 4. Usually I have TV at 7, but a little break between yeah. 3 or 4. And every coach I've called calls me between four and six. Oh well, yeah, they're done with their day, and they're driving home. Mm-hmm. Like that's so. So calls, not texts. I try, if possible, for like Sunday stuff when it's like generally real stuff to call, because then like you don't screw as much up. Mm-hmm. Like if so, someone could text you something and it's like ambiguous. Like I get a bunch of texts that'll be like done, hmm. and I'm like. Does that mean the negotiations are over or the deal is done? Those are two separate things. Yeah. Oh, true. So you got to clarify. Yeah. So I will constantly like get a text, call, can't talk. I'm like, okay, but you said this. What does this mean? Like that happens a lot. Um, so on Fridays, like basically I go through everything. I make all the calls. Nobody answers. They call me back at a very inconvenient time, sometimes at dinner. I'm like, oh, sorry, hold on. This person's calling me. And then the West Coast people call a little bit later. And then Saturday, it's kind of like, who didn't call today? Or, like, sometimes they just don't. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, well, this topic, which I planned for Sunday, is just not going to happen. Shit, I need something else. So, like, that's – Fridays are, like, a little bit stressful. Yeah, a little hectic just to play on the weekend. How often do you, uh, like, have a story? Like, let's say – and this is just an example. Okay. But let's say the commanders, like, would – you know, know that they're not moving on from Carson Wentz, but don't make an announcement until later in the season. How often does that happen for you? Where, like, you have something, and then you just wait, 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 and then you can finally put it out? I mean, that happens a lot, where there's stuff I'll, like, be tracking over the course of a couple months. Like, the Wentz thing was one where I felt pretty strongly after game two with Heineke, Heineke mm-hmm. yeah. that they were like, I think we're good on this. We're going to stick with Heineke. And then I would reach out to sources, and they're like, uh, "Like you're not wrong, but you're not right. Just hang on, hang on. And then I got to break it, I think, the fourth week or something like that. Is he still hurt? Is Wentz still hurt? Is he still hurt? Like, could he play right now? He could play, yes. Okay. Man. But so, then there's all, there's all sorts of weird stuff where, like, his playing time affects the draft pick. Right. Yeah. Which yes, it is does. one thing. And then it's like, I don't know. Like, it's. They're winning with Heineke. Yeah, they're winning. And, like, if he's not going to start, do you want him there as the backup? Like, paying him? Is that why – Does that? because I was, I was thinking about that uh, on Sunday when Mike White started and, and Zach Wilson wasn't – he wasn't dressed, correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. But he's healthy. So that's just he's like healthy. a – that's just like a, if you're not the starter, you're not going to even – you're not going to be the backup situation too. <sighs> that's such a strange situation. And, like, I don't – I think the Jets actually handled it pretty well. But I think the main thing is, let's say that, let's say that Mike White gets hurt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then Zach Wilson has to go in. But like the way he's playing now, kind of all like in his own head, like does that help? No, no way. Right. So like, just stay to the side, fix the issues. Well, against the Bears defense, maybe. True. Yeah. Well, and do they think that even if Mike White gets hurt, that they still have a better chance to win with just Flacco? Yeah. Like they probably th- view I, him as I the swear, third I think best that's quarterback. It. Yeah. And that's and that sucks. And I don't know that that's forever. These like 
hearing what Zach Wilson is kind of dealing with and like he grips really tight. It's like dealing with some stuff mentally, not like he's just he he's holds not playing, on. He's not playing good and he's not used to it. Yeah. Right. And also like, you know, he kind of gets in his own head. There was a there was a clip I put on Twitter on Sunday um, where Zach Wilson like this. No, this is in his last start. So Zach mm-hmm. Wilson. Patriots. It, uh, right. It's mm-hmm. a pass play. It's a quick game passing play, which is what Mac Jones did not like last did night. Not. Mm-hmm. Did not like the quick game. Um, everyone pass blocks. The running back gets set to pass block, and Zach Wilson just hands it off. Just hands it off. It's not a run play. He just hands it off. And yeah. you see that, and you're like, all right. He's in his own head. Like, that's a mental freak out. Yeah. Like, something's not right. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fuck up. But also, like, is he already at the – point of like a Baker Mayfield situation or is this more so like second year uh, even if he's playing bad this year and Mike White keeps winning like he's still going to be a Jet and he's going to get another chance or is this almost like and is a, his trade value gone yeah, already or shit. or are there coaches out there all right he's had one year and a half a year of games um, we can make it work like because he was a sec- second overall pick yeah. Yeah. one year ago that whole draft class too like even when you just look obviously Trevor Lawrence so is playing re- really well but like yeah Zach Wilson uh, you can throw Mac Jones in there for sure Trey Lance like there, it feels like Trey Lance it's been two years we have no idea no, what Trey Lance no is clue. and like what are they going to do because Jimmy G's it's his last year and we know what like guys go for like like, you'd think top-tier guys, you're like, oh, he's going to be a first or a second. You get a fifth for him. Like, is that where Zach Wilson's at now? Yeah. So, yeah. Do, like, do you think teams right now would be more apt to trade for a guy like Jordan Love than they would for Zach Wilson? Hmm. Probably. Wow, that's actually a really good question. Yeah. Did Jordan Love kind of, like, <laughs> sweepstakes? I don't even know if it's a sweepstakes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got to be one of the most interesting things. Like, and I know, you know, Aaron says a lot of good stuff on this show, and I always – I was appreciated. Hopefully, Pat's not hearing me say nice things. But, like, that is one of the best segments, I think, around. Mm-hmm. Good. Especially now that we're not doing the vaccine stuff. Uh, sure. That was fun, though. Sure. Was it? Friday. Did it get, did it get weird? Eh. Oh, there's that one Friday. Well, it's like, you know, when your in-laws are in town and <laughs> all of a sudden Saturday Night Live spoofing something that you were. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty wild, you know, <laughs> small world moment. Yeah. But, eh, you know. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, glad we're not doing that anymore. But I, <laughs> yeah. like, everyone knew that Jordan Love was not good. That was obvious. He was not good. And then he played actually, and people were like, "Oh my God!" Like maybe he's good. And does someone this off season go? I've seen enough. Yeah. Well, they right. have to pick up his option, right? Like, have yeah. they? Like, that's a, what a twenty million dollar fucking fifth year option, fully guaranteed, mm-hmm. which is in. So they'd have seventy million in quarterback salary potentially yeah. this offseason. Yeah. yeah, or does someone trade for him first, or do the Packers say, you know what, we're just gonna go another year of him because what if Aaron's done after next year? Yeah. Well, and like, what if Jordan? Lo- that's the thing. Like, so with the weird. rest of the season, like if you you took him in the first round, okay, right. And now, if you don't pick up his fifth year option, it was a completely completely wasted first round pick with the potential of him going somewhere else and being good. Like I feel like, just for insurance, I or I don't know. I have no idea. Well, that's why it feels like they have to start him these last few games, just because like okay, you look at the Packers season; it's not technically over, but like they, they, they there's win. a long road for them to get to the playoffs. So like you might as well just go with Jordan Love. No disrespect to Rodgers, but just like hey, let's see what we got. If he's yeah. really good, that's great news. We can pick up his fifth year option and not worry about it being like a terrible decision. Or you know he plays really well, and then you just get more value for a trade. Isn't the other side of that though? Like a lot of people are saying they're going to trade Rodgers. Like that's not going to happen. If no. he decides Almost to impossible. retire or whatever, like that's a different conversation. But if you do go down the ra- like they can right now they can sell. Hey, look at the Chiefs game last year where he started or two years ago, whenever it was. You know the COVID, when yeah, Rodgers got COVID, COVID and missed right. the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then look at how he looked against the Eagles. Like that, it looks like a different guy. Like he has actually come along quite a bit. If they do bench Rodgers or whatever for the rest of the year, if they're eliminated, and then Jordan Love goes out and looks like shit, then there is no chance yeah. that you can potentially trade him to someone. And again, they're not trading Rodgers. Like right. that's not gonna. They don't right. have enough 
I mean, I guess they they would kind of know, but they've, they're all also saying, like, hey, we still don't know if he's the guy after Rodgers. Like, that's kind of why we're in this, like, weird... See, that's a good point. Like, that, like we can talk about trade value and comp and all that stuff, and, like, I'm really interested in that. And so it's like, is he a second rounder? Is it a third rounder? Like, that's all interesting. But that's all a discussion about, like, you know, a re- what guard you would take in the second round in the future. The only thing that matters, I think, to the Packers now is what you guys are saying, which is, like, is this our guy? Yeah. Like... Do they get through this year knowing that when Aaron Rodgers retires in two or three years, this is our guy? And if, God forbid, he is, then the Packers will have, like, successfully executed the most amazing quarterback transition of all time, Mm -hmm. except for the last time they literally did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the fifth-year option thing, if they pick up his fifth-year option, uh, obviously this offseason, and then it would be the 2024 season, Yes, when, when it's fully guaranteed. 2024. Could they, in theory, uh, sign him to an extension or a different contract instead of giving him the fifth-year option? Or is that, like, set in no, stone? No, 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 They could. They could essentially decline the fifth-year option and reach an extension. Yeah. I just don't know why he would do that because right. it'd be hard to come up with a – The value of Hard to come up with a value. Well, and also, like, you know, just as a guy who wants – like, can you – does any guy want to – sit for potentially like six years before he gets yeah. to play that's another question no. like maybe you know? jordan love goes you know what nah or does he say i'd love to be quarterback of the packers yes so i'm just going to deal with another year uh we have a lot more to get to Hell yeah. mm-hmm. we have a lot more fun stuff Hell we yeah. have a guest in the second hour pat mcafee whoa <laughs> hey, whoa is that Yes. M- McAfee? Whoa, no, whoa, whoa. It's McAfee. Yep, yep. Pat That's McAfee there it is, right. is going to join us from Dallas-ish. Uh, Dallas. We are going to take a break. I'm going to go drink more coffee there and retouch my makeup. Nice. nice. That's smart. I wore makeup because it's no, you the look internet. Good. No, you look might good. as well. Appreciate it. So do we. Uh, so let's go to... You did not wear makeup. Nope. Liar. It would get all over my hat. Thought about it. Mm-hmm. Thought a little yeah. eyeliner, but yeah. sometimes it... A little eyeliner. Yeah. yeah. Lens it. Uh, all right. Let's go to break. Uh, internet, do your thing. We will be back in, I don't know, whenever we're five minutes. We'll be back in five minutes there whenever we're back, I guess. Take five. Bye. Bye. I feel really good. Like, my body feels fresh, my mind clear. Like, I'm going to go do it tonight, I think. You know? Like, I'm going to go do it. 77,899 people. Going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. Well, this is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could. We will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here. Pontius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Pontius' is cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Weaver! Punches and punches from Wee Man! Wee Man's so angry! Oh, look at 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 this! Body slam! Wee Man! Body slam! He's Sammy Zay! Wee Man used to kick himself in the face! Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay! You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million times in my mind. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. I want to go and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to, I want to see Pat McAfee tonight. Showboat, he looked at Pat McAfee with a right hand to Theory, and Theory stunned early. And now McAfee.
McAfee up, up over the top. McAfee with a spinning elbow. Moment of there he's in the trouble. Oh, 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 here. And McAfee driving oh, 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 the table. There he bounced off the announce table. And McAfee. Pat McAfee's beating the hell out of Austin Theory. Tim and Sally McAfee watching their kid beat the hell out of a boost bag. You remember this? Oh, a little payback. From Friday night, get it back! Hope these house get back. McAfee, oh, he almost lost! Coming up, McAfee lands on his feet! Austin Theory not sure what to do. Holy moly! I'm a sick for the ground! So is this! Super Plex! The finishing maneuver. The A Town down for Austin Theory. He hits this, it's over. McAfee rolls him up, shoulders are down. Does he have him? He does! Son of a bitch on earth comes out. The fact that I never got to see him as a kid, uh, then I get to watch his last match live, it was just, it was awesome. my ears like it feels like I got water in my ears I got beer in both of my ears but I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <coughs> to chug beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin have a Wrestlemania match that Vince McMahon was a part of I'm living on cloud 50 right now dude this is sweet what a day what a dream what a life now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wazers wide maybe a little whiskey wide maybe some carbs because I've been ketoing for four weeks wide When are we gonna watch that? What is it? What is the show? Um, it is Max. Jude. It is. <laughs> Please. Max is homesick from school. Right. Oh, Jude. Oh, Godspeed. Jude. Doesn't sound very Jude. sick. Doesn't... NFL players will be the only great thing you'll be able to watch on TV. I cannot uh, say any more, but perhaps I'll be on. Max, what's the name of the show he was on? Max. Say it, Max. 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 What say it, Max. Take down. Can you? Okay. Oh, you just... <laughs> Thank you, Max. That was awesome. What is it? Something takedown? Tailgate takedown. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Hey, can't wait to watch that. Connor, your question. We're going to have a major conversation after this. If you just sent him away for six months in summer, he would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Connor, your question for... Uh...
Hey! Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and fuck. We're back. We're back, right? Yeah. yeah we're back. We, yes. So the end. Oh, I'm sorry. We're back. Jeez. <laughs> this guy. The real problem here is that I was like kind of. Football. Oh, Jesus. Start. See, there's so many things that I need to learn about this. <laughs> Missed okay. the drop again. Mm -hmm. What? <sighs> Plus, I knocked the microphone, so everybody listening was like, here, like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all right. Yeah. Already. You're I was to... mostly like surprised that. I didn't cause the cancellation of this internet show, plus all the other platforms it's on. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, we're back. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show at the FanDuel Thunderdome, which is really one of the coolest places I've mm -hmm. ever been. Oh, yeah. Do not show up here. No. Um, no but I get sad. to show up here. Yes, so suck at all of you. Mm -hmm. For now. Um, so we're good. Can I? Yeah. 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 yeah I'd okay. Say. Very pleased to welcome maybe the biggest guest you could ever get on this show. Mm -hmm. His reputation precedes him. He is, according to sources in the Dallas-ish area, he is my internet inspiration. He is Pat McAfee. Yeah! yeah. Boys, how are we doing, team? How do I sound? I can't see you yet. They're working on the TV, but I'll tell you what, that introduction, Ian, uh, could leave a lot to be desired, I'd say. <laughs> you know, uh, Letting me know that I am your internet inspiration is although something that is very nice to say I've seen your internet actions and if that is what's happening I need to change the way I operate but I will say I appreciate the hell out of you traveling to Indianapolis Indiana to sit in that chair and although it might have been a little bit taller than you could have expected you might have had to hop up onto that thing you're doing a fantastic job and I appreciate you so much Ian uh, obviously I got a cowboy hat as soon as I arrived here in Dallas it's yeah, great sweet. to be back at this stadium we went live from this stadium Ian uh, for like a week before Wrestlemania in the bowels of this oh, place wow. and then I got stone cold stunned in here what? then I drank like six beers in here what? and then I shut this place down after Wrestlemania to like 3 34 a.m. with some people hammering uh, some booze. So it is great to be back in Dallas. This cowboy hat fits perfectly, and I appreciate the hell out of you, Ian. And boys, you're doing fantastic. The bend on that thing is fucking yeah, it's, awesome. It's, it's big rig. Does he? I don't know enough about. I know enough about cowboy boots. I have a pair. You should get a pair of cowboy boots, by the way. They're he, he has. He has. Who the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> Boom. Good. See, he listens already. You it's actually great. Boots. This thing you don't works know better. Listens myself. already? What are you talking about? You, I went to school in West Virginia, pal. What do you think this is? You think I don't understand that a good, fine <laughs> pair of cowboy <laughs> boots aren't the most beautiful things to put on your feet whenever you need to look like you're dressing up a little bit, but also need to gain three to four inches walking around? I'm six five in these fucking things. Same. I love the cowboy boots game and uh ian i think that's probably why you're in that game as well if i had to guess uh i'm not going to deny that uh so we when when i lived in dallas my wife and i decided to go get an awesome pair of cowboy boots um i got one regular pair she went to the store and it was this old dude who was like the clerk and instead of measuring her foot he gets down on the floor and just feels her feet sure and is like all right so you're uh Whatever, well, 11, because she's as humongous feet. Al Bundy? <laughs> I mean, it's literally what it was. And, and nobody thought it was weird, so we just kind of rolled with it. And then he got her cowboy boots, and they were good to go, and she still has them. Rap Sheet's a new sneakerhead, too, Pat. He hasn't showed them yet, but he's got these nice little Reeboks on. Pumps, dude. Well. They're pumps. Pumps. Can we dude, I, I still can't see anything on the screen, yeah. but if you got some pumps on right now, I am incredibly jealous, pal. <laughs> Um, I will leave him for you. I'll walk out of here barefoot. I don't think as you guys have thankful, the same uh, shoes. Uh, we'll give him a little Phil will come back next week. We'll make sure he gets a brand new pair of pumps. That's, yeah. you know what I mean? That's offensive. Again. <laughs> Ian, how are you doing hosting? You doing well? You break any news? I see. Is your wife tweeting for you? She's doing a fantastic job, pal. Uh, yeah, she was instructed to, uh, to tweet uh, in response to your tweet. I kept it a secret until she's playing a tennis match now, so I really thank her for taking time away from crushing people with her forehand to send a tweet. Um, Hell yeah. Does she have a backhand as well? Or does she, does she, like when I play tennis, I'm going forehand, boom, forehand, boom, forehand, 
Boom. Wait, what? Forehand. It's is that, deadly. Is that Boom. He's kidding, right? No, it's no, deadly. No, no, no. With a ton of top He's spin. very good what? at it. Fucking oh, yeah. good luck. Yeah, it's a problem. I got two forehands. <laughs> you tell me. I can't play against uh I can't play against somebody who's really good. Like if somebody was to bring it back with some significant pace, I obviously wouldn't be able to do right. the the pass as quick. But if you're playing against like intermediate folks, you know, I can normally steal a win or two from people and then they always go, oh, you this guy. <laughs> and then I get out of it and I don't play. It. That's kind of it's kind of my tennis action. I assume Lee is much better than that, if I had to guess. You too. Uh, you play tennis, you look like a tenniser. Uh, I'm, as you know, mostly a, a golfer, but she has, she has recruited me to play tennis. I went to the, uh, Nick Boletary Tennis Academy. No big deal. Wow. Well, tennis is dead. Who the hell is that? Tennis is dead. Well, and actually there's a team that like just Serena. Well, no, no. The, well, and there's a team now available in this new sport. That's way better than tennis pickleball because Drew Brees died this morning. People forget. Pat, did you see that by the way? Yeah. And you know. That's quite a thing to do for like what one and a half percent of the market share to that <laughs> yeah. company. I, mean, I wasn't going to say it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you what were. What do we do? What, yeah, I was. Well, you can't. You can't necessarily say it, but like it is kind of you know our world now. Uh, every single day to pay attention to all that type of stuff that's going on, and we get updated by people who know all the information all the time because we're lucky enough to be with the biggest one, and we hope forever to be the biggest one because of how good they are at everything they do. But like. That is just such, like, man, I was worried about, I, I'm not even like Drew Brees' biggest fan, but I'm like, no way an actual company would put this out. Yeah. Like a fucking guy just died to market lightning bets. Like, okay, live bets of marketing by killing Drew Brees. I mean, that is, that's a fucking interesting thing, but I'm happy to hear he's okay. Seems like it was all work. And I got worked, brother. Uh, I will say that happened to me because I just too. thought to myself, no way that is something that they think would be the right move, but. Hey, we learned about it, didn't we? I just yep. said the yeah. what they got, the promotion they got. I guess any any marketing is good marketing, but I'll be excited to see if this boosts the market share at some point. You know what I mean? But that's a wild thing to do. You know that's a I, wild thing to do ridiculous. for a commercial. You know who I feel bad kill for? Kill Drew guys. Brees. <laughs> We're gonna kill Drew Brees <laughs> for well, lightning bets. Or that was awesome. Did you know I didn't know that lightning automatically kills you? I thought you just could be maimed. It's so not automatic, but high percentage. Yeah, high I, percentage. I played college ball with the guy who got uh struck twice. Mm -hmm. No big deal. He and you didn't report on it, so wow. well, why didn't you? Well, why didn't you do that, that? Well, he doesn't report on college. We yeah. found out earlier today he does. He didn't know Blake Corm's name. No, yeah. I knew his or name. Mine. I just didn't know how to spell it correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw a photo uh, that was circulating. Thank you so much, sir. I Whoa. appreciate it. the crew that has set Did me up every that? single week. It's just been fan what happened. No, they just just water. Johnny just on the spot with the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's. That's Mike Roman. This guy is the fucking stage manager around here. He is incredible at what he does. Obviously, we can't turn the camera around to him because it's all in stationary positions. He never wants to get seen. This guy kicks ass. He was in Montana State doing the Lord's work, oh. trying to keep us all alive out there. But uh, the water was fantastic. And because I am a little parched down here, the vitamins did travel. The vitamins did travel. Mm -hmm. uh, and I forget what we... Oh, yeah. Boom McClee. He played in, uh, in the NFL. Rapport should have reported on that. He chose not to. Hmm. But I saw a picture floating around from the first hour. It was you and Ross Dellinger on the program mm -hmm. and you two just a just a two shot and i was like boy pat mcafee show has changed hasn't it i mean <laughs> pat mcafee show certainly has changed but i really do appreciate the hell out of you for all of this ian well thank you i appreciate you asking me um as i was telling the boys whose names i definitely didn't forget earlier in the show yeah he forgot my name when i uh, i was gonna ask ross dellinger a question he just he looked at me he said uh the boys have some questions and then i, I knew immediately he said, boy number one yeah yep. he said okay go ahead boy, boy and that was go, it go ahead bro yeah go ahead bro it was messed up so, so that's happened to you right pat i uh, never forgot anybody's names i'm actually rather solid with names but i could see how in ian rapaport's will remember this Ian Rappaport will answer your text message quicker than any other human that you've ever been around because Ian Rappaport lives in his phone mm -hmm. texting people. So I don't know how he has the capability of keeping everything straight ever, to be honest with you. Like, ever keep anything straight uh, because of how many different combos and news and everything he has going on in his life. But, yeah, certainly disrespectful to spit in Boston Connor's face uh, oh, in the stage that Boston Connor built. And also, I assume you disrespected Ty Schmidt, one of the most talented impersonators no, on earth. No, that one. And then let alone what you said to Tone Diggs. I, nailed, know, I couldn't even fathom what you said to an Italian up there on, on the stage. Thank but you, it's okay, man. You're going to forget about people at Rappaport. You're big time. You're Mr. NFL. You know what right. I mean? You're Mr. NFL. True. The text message thing, I actually like 
sort of not worry about, but I think about because I am on my phone all the time and I respond to texts a hundred percent. Cause if a coach or GM or someone texts me, you never know if they're like texting you and then going to go into a meeting. So I respond immediately. So when my friends, you, you and I are friends. So that's, I would include that in the right. What's that? I, it broke up. Did you, you say? No, I said you and I are friends. <laughs> Did you hear? He, he hears uh, that, yeah. right? Nothing. I hear nothing. No, 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 connection is messed up. Maybe not. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so I have to like put a delay on my text because I don't want to respond there? to my <laughs> friend. Ian, <laughs> Ian, you there? Uh, this is your good Ian. friend. This is your good friend, Ian. Pat. Anyway, I have oh, to delay how quickly I. Yeah, we're friends. 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 Can I just ask? So you got. I know we got some NFL stuff, and I want to go through some games with you and let you tell me who is going to win. Not for me, but for other people who might need to know that for any reasons. No, they don't. Not for me. But go ahead. Okay. Um, I, that's what I'm waiting on, honestly. Um, what is it like there? I mean, big game coming in Dallas. Like, is it? Does it feel like a big game? Does it? Or because it's Dallas, does it feel like regular? Like, so Ian, you know this, and the boys know this because we've traveled down here couple different times we're not in dallas we're in arlington uh right. arlington is like 25 minutes from dallas 25 minutes from fort worth so that's the whole dfw area here it's like a triangle almost with everybody kind of bouncing back and forth in there and i believe jerry just decided to bring it here because land was probably incredibly cheap if at, at some Sounds time better. and it's kind of just got built up now obviously the stadiums here the old uh texas rangers stadium is that who used to play here uh ty yep. do you remember mm -hmm. the old texas rangers stadiums here so we're not really in an area that i think is like hustling and bustling during the day i think this is a destination town for people uh. that are coming to games if that makes sense so i think probably people are going to start filling in there's a couple of hotels in the area very close probably get some kansas state fans in is that walmart that. popping pat uh, the Walmart, I've not driven past her. We came in the other direction, oh. uh, but I will certainly take a drive by the most epic and electric Walmart in the history of Walmart. So for sure. Uh, so it's kind of dead to be honest with you. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay. At, it's a little chilly, a little breezy, almost couldn't land at one airport ooh, ooh. because of how breezy it was. Almost Damn, had to go geez. to a different one. The breezes subsided for 15, 15, 20 minutes. We were able to get down. We we're doing a little bit of this, doing a little bit of this about Dallas to try oh, to figure out where we were going to land God, there. The Almost just burped up this uh, green tea. But yeah, we got down. It's great to be here. It should be electrifying tomorrow. The, I guess the championship game days, and we got a part, uh, we were part of the SEC one in 2019 where, Foxy, you were with me, right? Who else was there? Yep, Zito was too. Oh, yeah. Me, Zito, Foxy were doing some game day stuff that year, and they kind of dropped me in, then pulled me out, then dropped me in and pulled me out. And I got a chance to be at the SEC championship with College Game Day. And Georgia was playing in it, so it was a little bit more electrifying, but with more Georgia fans. So I thought it was a good – they said normally championship weekend kind of hit or miss with game day because the fans traveling in. This game's at noon, so it should be good. They're thinking it's going to be electric like most uh, game day settings are. So I have no idea what to expect. I know it's great to be back in Dallas. And, uh, yeah, it's getting a little breezy. It's a little chilly. Probably should have wore a little bit of an overcoat. Don't need a Montana jacket, but something in between this and that would have been nice, I think. Ian? That Montana stuff looked real cozy. Yeah. At least you didn't have your feet rubbed. What was that? Oh. Whoa. Is that a sore subject? Uh, no, it's not a sore subject, but like, oh, what a what? situation. Yeah. What a, it, it's like such a situation there. So there was no, no uh, there was no heaters on the bottom part of the uh, of the set. And then the generations were our generators were going as well. So like the top heaters were kind of going as well. I mean, it was six degrees, seven degrees. We weren't oh. moving at all. It was cold as hell. And we had learned about these foot warmer things. Uh, I guess they have like boot warmers or sock warmers or something. Mm -hmm. And we had learned about it halfway through the show because everybody's toes were in a bad spot. Mine uh, like took me like hour 45, two hours in to get into uh, my, my feet into a bad spot. Reese very early. He had a very nice pair of dress shoes on or dress boots on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they were necessarily built for the weather. He might have been told that they were. But once you feel that Montana brisk, mm -hmm. it was. So his feet early in the program did start to hurt. And then I think Dez's went um, like a bit after that. And then Herbie's feet went. And then mine went later. But like everybody's feet very pain like a lot of pain could not feel anything on our feet so we had learned about these foot warmer things and i don't want to tell the story for herbie because i don't think he like, like herbie doesn't like herbie shouldn't care because of the way i think he thought that those were going to get 
there's some boot warmers mm-hmm. that were going to potentially mm-hmm. get shoved right. on there. And then Trish, who's been with the show for a long time, who is just like, uh, she's, uh, I don't want to say she does everything. Like she is just like a hard worker who does everything here. Uh, like if I need, or if anybody spills something, like she's the one that cleans it up. She's the one that picks these up. She's the one that does that. So like, I think she was just trying to help Kirk, who is a friend of hers. She's known for a long time while putting the boot uh, sticker heater things underneath. And then the way it looks obviously in like a 15 second thing is <laughs> terrible. Now I would, I did not have that. I did not get that. Or have that done for my feet. So, I mean, you can certainly judge Herbie for that little soft Ohio guy. Oh, yeah. sure. 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 Hypothermia. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing. But I believe that's what happened and you caught it. And it was like, I, I don't know if Herbie even knows because, you know, he's not a big internet guy. He, he's getting into the internet a little bit more about the whole reaction to it. But I would assume he's like, oh, come the fuck. I couldn't feel my fucking feet. What do I, like, I assume <laughs> that would be like if I was him, that would have been my response. But you're going to have to get his thing. So, yes. It is a, definitely a subject, Ian. Not a sensitive one, though, at all, because it was actually the lack of sense that caused that whole thing, and that was the feeling in our feet for that entire show. So I feel bad for the whole situation. Trish is a badass. She kicks ass. Herbie, badass. She, he kicks ass. It just... What a scene on the internet there in the middle of Montana. I saw it going, too, with how he was dressed, too, and that whole thing happened. Mm-hmm. It was an internet, you know? That was the internet. Yeah, tag team. There's that a is, lot of recipes in there. You know, yeah, I mean, that's it, a lot of ingredients. God, that is like, I mean, I know you guys are live on the internet all the time, so these kinds of like things happen to you. Sure. But like the, and like I'm, you know, I'm on plenty, but I'm not, when I'm on, I'm on, and when I'm off, I'm off. When, you know, when you're doing a, a live show, all like you're never kind of off. Like the internet sometimes is scary. Like that's Ian, all that you know. Ian, how old are you? Uh, 42. Um, I'm going to be 43 in January. There's a birthday party Happy joke birthday. in there that I can't find. Happy wow. birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday, dude. Hopefully you guys all come to Happy my birthday. birthday party. No, so the reason why I'm telling you that is because, um, like, when I was... You just put that right here, boss. Thank you so much. Oh, I can see you guys now. Oh, nice. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. Hey. Thank Let's you, brother. Go. Great work. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, there's something going on with the TV here. Who knows? Uh, but I think I'm, like, uh, I'm 35 years old. And my senior year of high school was like first year Facebook, like actual, I think. I think it was first year Facebook nationally yeah. as opposed to just available where uh, Zuck went to school or whatever. So social media era was immediately after I graduated high school. I think if you went through high school with social media in with a camera on your phone, I think you have this like in you already. I, I kind of developed it once I got into league and cameras got on phones, but like you're always on like you are. And if you're not like, you're going to get caught being yeah. whoever you are. Like, that's why I think you're never going to see me ever be anything other than who I am because like a motherfucker is going to catch me walking down the street and he's going to talk to me. Like if I'm a complete different person, then than I am on my show, then everybody's going to be, this guy's a food gaze. This is a show. This is fake. This is all bullshit. So I think like this is a generational gap thing where people just have to know that, like, like, hey, you're always on. Like, when you're in public, like, everything you do is being watched by somebody. And if you watch Dateline, you understand that even more. <laughs> everything yeah. you do is being watched by somebody. And I think, like, when you start thinking like that, I don't – it could make people robots. I think it has done that. People are scared to have any emotion. People are scared to do anything. And I think we see that with big-time athletes, especially who are younger. They're scared to get caught doing anything. But I think it also presents an opportunity for people to be, like, the best versions of themselves, you know, where it's like, hey, if there is an old person trying to cross the road who can't walk, like instead of like just going by, like I think there's people nowadays because they're potentially going to get caught on camera doing it or if they don't do it, they're going to get buried for it. They'll go do it. So I think it also has made the world a better place, although it is certainly a fucking nightmare to deal with every single day. Ian. I mean, I feel like you sort of hit on the, the right sort of struck the right chord, I guess you would say, on that. Like, I, I, you and I are in different levels of internet fame. I think that's fair to say. Um, I, so, like, you just being whoever the fuck you are. By the way, I curse on your show now that I'm hosting. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank Look you. Yep. Let's go. Appreciate it, guys. Um, you being just kind of whoever you are is part of the reason why it's great and why this thing is great. Um, I sort of gave up like five years ago or seven years ago pretending anything. And so I just assume now. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? No, nothing. Just, just, I just, I just realized that 
uh, whatever I say could potentially be public. Like when I was, we were talking about before when I was covering Mississippi State, and it was sort of pre phone cameras, whatever, people in a bar would come up to me and they'd be like, so tell me what you really think about X. And I'd be like, all right, if I do that, this is going to end up on a message board. And it's going to be, I just talked to Ian, he said this. So at some point I'm like, I'm going to one, act like a camera's on all the time, or two, not really care. And you know, it's not a hundred percent uncensored, Thank but you. like, like, you know, like I don't hide anything. My family's out there. If I have a glass of bourbon, for instance, what? What? Maybe some, right. maybe a cocktail when I get to the Super Bowl. A glass right. 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 beer. What? Right. Right. You know, Bloody Mary on a Saturday morning to watch soccer. Whatever it is. Right. 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 You're blitzed right now. I, I, by the way, Pat, decline bourbon pre-show. Yeah. Didn't, Did you really? I didn't between the hours, though. You should have seen him slugging it down with his <laughs> pot belly sandwich. It was wild. <laughs> Welcome to the... Hey, thanks for being yourself in the Fandle Thunderdome, yeah. man. We just talked about you being yourself and not being something you're not. Bourbon gets shoved in your face. You say no. Okay, you're not Ian Rappaport anymore. Yeah, then you get a little comfortable during life. a commercial break. They say, you want some bourbon? You're like, I'm Ian Rappaport again. Bang, sling that thing down and do your job. We appreciate that. That's a very... Um, I think you Ouch. did a good thing, Ian. I think you did a good thing, Ian. Becoming yourself. <laughs> I've, tried, like I said, yeah. I, I've tried hard to be I, I myself, think, Pat. I think you did a good thing there. I think that's the right play. I um I've always got Nick Nick used to mock me for this. And not mock me, but Nick used to always point it out. Nick and I would start talking about something and I would just be like, ah, I don't know, man. Like I don't think that's the right time to talk about this or anything like that. He's go, Well, would you you always say that I was paranoid or something? Yeah. Nick was always like, you're paranoid, you're paranoid, you're paranoid. Because it would be about somebody that we don't even know or somebody that's even important. I'm like, ah, I'm not saying anything about that dude in this particular setting or whatever. <laughs> and you, they, there's only four other people. It's like, you don't know who knows. I mean, everybody's going to say something here. I'm not going to fucking ax myself from a future conversation or opportunity in this moment. Nick's like, you're paranoid, you're paranoid. And it's like, no, no, that's just, be, it brings out a better version of you. That's, it's good. Yeah. It's all good, but it is bad. You got you to stand in P's and Q's, can't get your feet rubbed in public. It's all, it's a learning process. Yes. We're all learning. You can't really get anything rubbed in public, I would say. Just That's overall. true, actually. Yeah. Yeah, um, get let's caught. get to some games. I um, want to get your take on who's going to win. So is that what we do here, guys? Solid. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm a regular viewer of the show, so I know how this segment goes. Mm -hmm. But is that what we do? Yeah, pick yeah. all the winners. Yep. All right. Against the spread. You bet. Uh, Pat, do not let me down. Okay? Hey, don't I'm, you worry about it, Ian. Okay. Last not night... Like Boston Connor did last night. Yeah, Man. You called him boy, he addressed you called him it. Boy one. You called him boy one yeah. earlier. Yeah, yep. Boy one sold us all on a big super boost. Mm -hmm. And I thought we were going to get out of our super boost misery last night. I thought there was a chance. Obviously, Josh Allen's going to run the ball. And there was a couple prepared runs for him yeah. last night. I thought it was going to be good. Didn't love that Stevenson fumbled the ball twice early. Thought they were going to pull him. Didn't work. I mean, it was just a full on nightmare super boost situation. That we have experienced so many times with this super boost. And I got people now with platforms, blue check marks, not just paying eight bucks, but also having some people telling me I'm a fraud and I'm stealing from people. And now you think Connor is trying to steal from people to make FanDuel rich? You think that guy mm -hmm. with that mullet down there, with the way he acts, didn't want everybody to win money, including him and most importantly, himself? Yeah. Golly, we got to win one at some point. We have to, have don't to. we? Yeah, Boys, it has to happen. Yeah. Have to. And we were close at a couple times, and like you said, there's things that just went around, like Josh Ink, uh, Josh Allen, he kind of like tweaked his ankle a little bit, like he landed on it, oh. and then at that moment it was like, uh, that's not great. And the worst part is, uh, I think, looking back to the thought process yesterday, there was a thought like, hey, maybe we do just boost, uh, you know, Gabriel Davis touchdown because even though we'll yeah, try and find digs and yeah. digs, yeah, like the thought was there, but yeah, it really didn't have any hope. When that fourth quarter started, I thought there was a chance, but no, yeah, I let the people down and we'll get back on the horse and we'll get it done. We didn't talk about last night uh, at all here. Ian, great hosting. Wanted to get maybe Pat's thoughts on uh, last night's game. AFC Before, East wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, great hosting. Before Ian, we get to the games, guys, obviously there was a football game last yeah. night. Really mm -hmm. important True. one. We have definitely we not addressed this while Pat was eating fried chicken at Babe's, which is a great place, or maybe the brisket at Pecan Lodge, also a great place. Oh, Pecan Lodge. Boss Lady is the best. One of my favorite places on earth. Anyway, uh, Pat, I was just curious. Um, Patriots yeah. didn't play good. Bills played oh. good. Uh, what did you think? That's a good question. Ian. Yeah, Thank thanks. you so much for bringing that up. I haven't even, uh, you know, cause normally I should have addressed that very early, but I got 
so jacked up about being in Dallas and so zeked out of my mind that yeah. you were there in studio <laughs> doing yep. your thing. So it was hard for me to kind of stay on track and really start chit chat about fair. what I wanted to chit chat about. But let me talk about last night. What was I doing? What was I thinking? I thought to myself, oh, Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick figured out. Mac Jones just had 380 yards in a loss, in a loss. We thought he he's playing his best football in a loss. And then the Buffalo Bills started last night. And we start watching Josh Allen do fucking absurd things on a football field Crazy. yet again. And we we maybe haven't seen him do that in a couple of weeks, so we forgot, didn't we? We forgot. Yeah. We all forgot. The, the, the elbow was a thing. Oh, is he throwing it as hard? Is he missing some throws? He's going short on a couple. Then the next week they struggle. The next week they struggle. And it's like, oh, we haven't. We forgot. And we would like to inform Josh Allen uh, that I do sincerely apologize from the tip of this here cap to the heel of these Lucchese's mm-hmm. and Ooh. every single part of my body in between. I'd like to let you know, I'm sorry that we forgot about you. I am sorry that we forgot about the type of player you are, the type of plays only you can make this rollout jump pass thing that you showed 20 seconds ago that I'm just now seeing on this iPad. <laughs> that thing was so absurd and it, it felt like it was so easy looking. There had to be a penalty on the bills. Nope. Penalty on the Patriots. They're not celebrating enough. It was bananas watching them last night. Stephon Diggs, it does appear as if he is, you know, one of the guys who can say, I am him Mm -hmm. and say it with purpose. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about the Patriots on the other side. That offensive line. Man. What? Yeah. They, they stink. And they got, it's seemingly, they have what? No offensive coaches on on the roster nope. on the staff. Mm-hmm. Do they have an offensive line coach on the staff? Uh, Matt Patricia. You know, I hate to say, yeah. Sorry, man. It's Matt Patricia. So he's spending so much time drawing up plays with that Ty Conner. Ty, Ty, you get it, Ty yeah. Conner Rogan number two <laughs> pencil. That he's forgot to teach the boys how to set their hips and move some bodies. Yeah, what the I hell? mean, people are thinking about Tom Brady going back there next year. That's being talked about, and. Uh, it's obviously not real because why would, why in the world would Tom go back there? That team is not the team that we think they are whenever we say Bill Belichick's there, whenever we say that they'll be able to figure it out, when we think that they'll be able to just make every game a game. Look what happened with the Bears. Look what happened with the Bills. These are primetime games. Mm-hmm. These are primetime games. The Patriots dynasty seemingly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Shoot. Mm. Dead. I think it is. I honestly think it is. It is. Uh, that's crazy. I, I texted Connor last night. I said, you didn't stink. And uh, I think that's just the way it is, Connor. I think it's the way it's going to be. And I don't love it because it's the end of something that was so fucking awesome. It was the end of something that our league had that no other professional leagues had. It was the end of witnessing greatness in real time. There will never be another dynasty in all professional sports that will be able to match what the New England Patriots were able to do for 20 years. It's going to be impossible. With the opportunities that athletes are going to have outside of their sport to make money, I don't think it's going to keep athletes around long enough to build something that was built in New England Mm. the way it was built for the last 20-some years. That fucking run was unbelievable. Now, I was not only a fan of the run from at home, I was also a part of the run on a couple of different occasions when we got run out of Foxborough or anywhere else that we potentially played them. You had nothing but respect for them. There's a lot of clauses and asterisks, you know, about things that had happened over 20 years of dominance. And that's going to take place when nobody else can figure out how the fuck they were able to do what they were able to do because everybody has to think, well, There's no way. This is like when Elon Musk created the Tesla. This Tesla car comes out of nowhere. It's faster, stronger, better for the environment, allegedly. Allegedly at the time. I'm just telling you what it was said at the time. I'm just telling you what it was said at the time. It is quicker, faster, stronger, better for the world, and cheaper than your car is in any other car that was ever made before, somehow out of nowhere. Everybody be like, this guy's an alien. I actually said that. All these humans have attempted to do this for however many years since the fucking Model T came. Nobody's been able to do it. Then this one guy comes in and is better than everybody ever. And he, he's never even been in it. It's like, that guy's an alien. Same thing with this Patriots team. Teams have been able to be good. Okay. And back in the day in the 70s and 80s when there was no, not as many teams and salary cap parity and everything like that. So there has been teams that have been on runs. 
but for two decades with how the game was regulated and the parity perceived around the NFL, how any given Sunday and how many different lucky events that had to happen for it to all take place yeah. and health concerns to take place. It's like, that'll never happen again, I don't think. And I know that I sound, you can add me to a long list of media folks here when I say this. But I, I am afraid that I have to admit at this point that that Patriots dynasty is dead. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. Not one bit. Uh, here's a man that was on the call last night. Just walked over. Incredible suit game. Looking wow. fantastic. Herbie. Hey. Herbie, I just got a promo. Uh, I just got a promo about the Patriots dynasty being dead. Ooh. Now, you're new to the NFL. You're going to have to talk to Bill Belichick a lot sooner than me, so you shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, but what did you see last night? What did you see last night? I saw an offensive line that has issues, and it's easy to point the finger right now at Mac Jones and the offensive coordinator. But until they get that right, yeah. Offense coordinator, offensive line coach. Well, to me, the personnel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Th th those tackles, they as a combo, yeah. those they would have to rank near the bottom oh, of yeah. the NFL. So, what were your, what they, were your they, you know the thing that really caught me the booth yeah. in New England is really low. Like the fans are right there where you're calling the game. I, I just felt a sense of just acceptance. Of where they are. That's where Connor's at right now. Yeah. Connor, are, are you, is that yeah. is that a normal thing? Kirk's saying that's it pretty really, normal. It really shocked me, Connor. I, I, I'm just so used to watching the Patriots. It's you know 20 years of excellence and not just the NFL, but all professional sports. And to see their fan base just kind of like, like this ain't it, boys. We, we suck. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Game's over. Like early, they were like that. So. But you look hey, great. You're so doing great. Like your you're, you're doing no, great. No, no, you're doing great. You're doing great in the NFL, isn't he? Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. Crushing. You're doing, oh, yeah. You're doing yep. great in the NFL. They're Keep going, Herbie. Really TV, Herbie. Love you, Herbie. Love you, Herbie. What's that? Who's got the best picks this week? It's not going to be me, pal. It's not going to be Connor either. He just lost Super Boost last yeah, night. Tone bad. Dick's probably the right guy. Tone, give us some, give us some winners. I'll send you Tone. I'll send him to, I'll All send right, Tone's buddy. picks to Herbie. No, you're not bothering us ever. Kirk Herbstreit was on the show. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Herbie. Herbie. Thank you, Herbie. Hey, Herbie. Oh, that, was a, that was my second Herbie. guy. Yeah, but that, that is you? like the vibe from New England, to Herbie's point, like getting that whole entire sense from the crowd. Like because of the fact that when, you know, you mentioned the 20 years of the dynasty, like because of those 20 years, like it's not a fan base that wants to go to the playoffs. Like they want to go to the fucking Super Bowl. And it's not like anything where we're, we're not sure if it's our year by week, you know, 12, 13, whatever we just started yesterday. Like, by now, in previous, you know, 10 years ago when Brady was here, by now we'd know, like, okay, this is the team that's going to go. Like, it's not like it's September where we start slow. Like, this is the important football. We know by the start of December, like, yeah, we have a team that's going to go to the Super Bowl. And I feel like a lot of fans have, you know, known that we don't have that for quite some time and that the two teams in the division, the Dolphins and the Bills, are a team that can because they are so good and because of how many weapons they have. And to your point, Pat, too, like when you look at those last 20 years, has there been this much talent? Like it feels like now in the NFL – just across the board, there are so many better quarterbacks, wide receivers, teams as a whole, versus when you look at, you know, when the Patriots were doing that dynasty, it was, what, it was Big Ben, it was the Ravens, yeah. and... Flacco, and, and Big Ben, Peyton. Peyton, yeah, yeah but, and that, that was kind of it. And even those teams, you know, the, when it got to the playoffs, something would happen. Like, you mentioned the luck. Like, the Patriots are what? They're uh, offsides against the Chiefs away from having oh. five Super Bowls. Right. They're a throw against the Seahawks away from having four Super Bowls. And then they're what? The biggest melt in probably the history of the NFL wow. from only having three Super Bowls. Like so many different things happened during that run that I think you can look back on now. Like, yeah, that just won't happen again because of how many, you know, bounces went one way or the other. And then you look at the Chiefs now. Chiefs, after they won that first Super Bowl, oh, this team's the next dynasty. They've been to an AFC championship every single year that Mahomes has been uh, the starting quarterback, but they've only won one Super Bowl. Like, it's just so much more difficult. And when you look at Brady, you know, that age group was kind of the team that kept it together, but also he was able to take pay cuts. The head coach oh, yeah. was the GM. Like, there are all these other oh, things. Mahomes that is on happens. that program a little bit, though, because he has a contract that's very, like, that would be the only, the uh -huh. only path that I could. Hey, are they going to restructure that, Ian? Are they going to restructure that? 
Uh, I think they will eventually, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to cripple the team because similar to Brady, it's important to Mahomes to keep things together. You had Travis Kelsey do a contract that was, let's just say, very reasonable. Like, I don't know that it's going to be like the Patriots, but to me, that's the closest possibility we could get of like four or five Super Bowls over a 10-year period. Yeah, and honestly, we might... You know, 15 years from now, we might look back and it's like, oh, the Bills won four out of eight. Yeah. It's like, that is another good example. We never know. You know what I mean? Like, we have no idea because, but we do know that what the fucking Patriots did, I guess we don't know. I I feel like I do. That ain't never happening again. I don't think in any sport. I don't, in any sport, I don't think it's ever happening again. So I would like to say it was an honor to get that, you know, feeling. After the fourth and one, fourth and two, Melvin Bullitt makes the tackle in Indianapolis. What Kevin year was Falk. that, Connor? Kevin Falk. I think that was two thousand and seven, right? Or was that? No, no. no, I was, no, no it was no. after. It was when I was, I was the there. It was 09, I think. Oh, so that was the Super Bowl year. Not for no. the. No, no, no. Us. It was against the Saints. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, so that was that year. I got a feeling, you know, in that in that brief moment, in you know, am I too young to remember it? Probably. Can I act like I remember it? Sure. For the sake of this story, I got to be there whenever we had a big win over oh, yeah. the New England Patriots, you know, and got, I think my mom actually, and I, Sally will have to text me here. She's a wonderful lady. She'll have to text me and remind me, but I think she puked in the club that night after oh, that yeah. game. I think, oh. I think Sally McAfee puked in the club that night. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Are so you talking like in the club or like in the bathroom in the club? No, in a, uh, she, I don't, I think it was a bag mm-hmm. nice. in the club. In the club. She was all by, I mean, she was very, you know, nice. She went into the corner, I think, like, made sure nobody knew. Nice. I didn't know until I saw her afterwards. And she told me, I, I just puked. And I said, geez, Sal. <laughs> all right. My mom used to get after it. Yeah. So that was awesome. <laughs> my mom and I, uh, my mom and I shared like a cartoon sized bottle of Patron. Right. Uh, I forget what birthday. But we were standing on uh, boxes, passing it back and forth. Yeah, Sally McAfee and I. Oh, she was pounding that bottle on the stage. You remember that? Yeah, that was at. uh, Where's that at? The Vogue. Some Vogue, yeah, like a music venue. My mom and I were there. Nick was there. We're just hammering this Patron bottle that was like this fucking big. It was the biggest. It was a cartoon sized bottle. I've never seen it. But anyways, yeah. After that game, we we had big celebrations for all those things what a run congratulations patriots and, yeah and uh i'm not we're not saying you won't make it into playoffs again we just don't think that that team for a long time is going to be able to battle against the goliaths of the afc right now yeah right? no chance and like that's why last night i sent you that text like i am just grateful that i was able to be alive during this time where my entire life was afc championships and super bowl appearances and even because of that team don't you think like you mentioned the bills maybe winning you know four out of eight when we look back on this in 15 years but with how good the afc is across the board like what if the bills only go to two super bowls three super bowls because of mahomes burrow i mean that's something that really is different from when the patriots i don't want to get to pat's games in a second so people know no no we'll go quick through those don't worry about we got time for good conversation um and your information we need your Cool. Oh, yeah. um, so I think that's part of the problem because if you think about like when Brady and those guys were really, really dominating, it was the Colts yeah. who, you know, I think it's fair to say Brady had their number a little bit. I'm sorry for present company excluded, plus all the Indianapolis fans. Um, it's very fair it's to not, say. It's not like there was a lot oh, of up. dominant <laughs> teams in the – it's not like there was a lot of dominant teams in the AFC. Now, like, if you were to say like to me right now, I mean, Chiefs, like, who's the favorite? Who's your favorite in the AFC? Chiefs, uh, Chiefs are right Chiefs. now, but Bills right. are right. right. Right, but then, like, would you be surprised if the Dolphins made the Super Did Super last Bowl? night change anything? Uh, uh, I don't think I don't think so, personally, good. just because of how. No Vaughn. No yeah. Vaughn yeah. last night. Is yeah. he coming back? He's coming back, right? End of the season? Uh, he's going to come yeah. back probably January, when, whenever that Sunday is. So I think it's January 1st or 2nd. Um, Fresh. Yeah, I think Miami, I think, was the uh, estimation. Yeah, the second time fresh. they play Miami at home. Well, that's the other thing. Like, the Bills, or- as an organization. They'll be fresh. Team, very they'll be- fresh. Like, Just like Trey White. Be better than ever. Yeah. I mean, that's right, the other I'm thing. Sorry, it's like, right. Bills might. No, no, it's cool. Bills might get back two of their. I mean, Tredavious White is, like, slowly come along. They took forever to put him on the field. But they handled that so well. 
didn't rush him. And like you guys know, like when you come back from an injury, it takes a while and you got to trust it. You got to mentally trust it. He was not there until now he is. Vaughn, you know, Vaughn goes on the Vaughn cast, which is kind of like a podcast, but it's his name. So it's a Vaughn cast. Um, Hell yeah. Oh, like this is an Ian cast right now, kind of. I wasn't going to say it, but yes. Oh, um, a rap cast. Rap oh, cast. Yeah. cypher. Yep. Rap cast. Uh, the nah, this is the this is the Pat McAfee show on the free and action streaming. M- me television. not knowing what that stood for was truly an amazing. We had to look it up. We didn't know either. Did oh, you, you didn't know either. Honest? No, no, it's fake. No, it's not yeah. real. It's not a real thing. Yeah, you made it so, up for yeah. a marketing thing. For you guys, it's just oh, hey, cool. our podcast is available on smart TVs. Basically, yeah, no. right? bingo. It's called fast. Yeah. Smart TVs. And where podcasts are. Smart TVs. Are Ours is on podcasts are. fast. We're fast stuff streams. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and so the Bills, like, so Von Miller goes on the Von cast and says he's going to come back in one week. And the Bills, instead of being like, all right, what a warrior. They're like, no, no, you're going to come back in four weeks. We're not going to rush you. We're going to make sure you rehab properly. And you're going on IR. And to me, it was like. You know, teams can be needy to get injured guys back. This was the opposite. Like, they handle everything so well, you know? Yeah, I saw Bean at the uh, Ohio State-Michigan game, and I'm a massive fan of his because not only how nice he is to us, like coming on our show and chit-chatting with us, but, like, also the way he has gone about building the team is one that if you're going to be a GM, you would hope – that you'd be able to do. Now, I've always said I want to be very aggressive if I'm a GM. Give me all the vets because they're proven. He's done that. He traded for Stephon Diggs out of Minnesota Ooh. when everybody thought Stephon Diggs was maybe going to be a team problem. Brandon Bean said, I don't give a damn. He'll get in our That's culture, in our team, in our facility, and it'll be great. He's gone there. He's paid money to Von Miller whenever he thought that he needed a closer. He's drafted well. He's stayed committed to Josh Allen because, remember, year one, not that great at football. Mm-hmm. Year two. Got better, nowhere near like potential bust. People are talking about oh, Josh yeah. Allen ever going to be good. That was actually a conversation that was happening. And Cam Newton was available at the time. And I, oh, as wow. a stooge outsider, was like, Hey, are you thinking about bringing Cam Newton in so Josh can continue to develop? And Cam Newton is like similar style, similar size as Josh Allen. He came on our show and was like, No, 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 I would like Josh Allen to know that we are building this team around him. This is his team. There is no conversation anywhere. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, I love this. Like, this is this is what you would want if you were a player. If you were a fan base, I assume there, whenever they got rid of Tyrod Taylor, after Tyrod Taylor gets him to the playoffs for the first time in a long time, mm-hmm. and everybody's burning outside going, what are these? They finally have success, and they fucking burn it down. It was like they had patience. They fucking grew a quarterback. They have spent money. Yeah. I love the way they operate. And you, you, your point was very valid. Like, because of the way they built the roster, they have the capability to be patient with guys. Yeah. Like, hey, we don't need you right now. Just go ahead and get healthy, and we're going to need you down a stretch. It's why you got paid to come here, actually, was to end games at the end of the season when it matters. So I love what they do over there, Ian. I really do. I honestly, I'm a big fan. You want to hear a Bill story that I've never told before? Here we go. This is a good Can't one. Can't wait. This, uh, this actually... Hey, welcome see. to the rap cast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, this actually, is, this might surprise you, takes place in a bar. What? Um, Shocker. I had a drink, maybe two. What? So, anyway, so uh, we're at the league what? meetings uh, in December, Josh Allen's rookie year. And at that point, we sort of didn't really know what he was. And it, I wouldn't say played great. And the jury was definitely out. And so I see Brandon Bean, and we're chit-chatting. And he kind of says to me... We're talking about Josh Allen, and he's like, do you not like our quarterback? And I was like, wow, I'm not, I'm not a scout. Like, do you guys do? He Whoa. goes, no. He's like, I can tell by the way you're talking. He's like, do you not think he's going to be good? And I'm like, I really don't know. I was like, it's been up and down. He's like, listen, he's going to be great. You're going to be wrong, and here's what I want you to do. And he gave me, like, specific games to watch. He's like, you could go back and watch our game against the Dolphins, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you need to watch these four plays – and you need to look at them and study them and then come back to me and understand why this guy is going to be our franchise guy. And I was kind of oh, like, yeah. either he's 100% right and a rock star scout or delusional. And guess who was right? It was not me. <laughs> and he knew all along. It's been that's really, really sweet. Cool. That is. That's a great story. And that type of belief, I guess you kind of have to have because the guy's your franchise and the guy's your program. But he saw something. 
and stayed committed to it when everybody was telling him he probably shouldn't. So there's a certain certain type of gumption there too. Whenever an Ian Rappaport potentially walks over and says, "This guy stinks," you know, and then <laughs> right in Ian Rappaport's face, going, "Okay." But you're not the only one telling the Bills that Josh Allen sunk at that time. Everybody was saying that. It was getting loud. Mm -hmm. And Josh Allen kept working. Bean and the whole crew over there stayed by his side. And now they're just steamrolling the fucking Patriots in Foxborough on primetime television. What a time. What a time. Congrats, Bills Mafia. Congrats. Congrats, Congrats, Bills. Congrats, Congrats Bills Mafia. Mafia. You guys earned that thing up yeah. there in those cold winters. I just hope for their case, you know, he's not the Peyton Manning of this Brady, you know, Ooh. era. And Whoa. Mahomes is Brady. Just just for their sake. I'm not trying to throw a shot or a shade or anything like that. Just hope he wins more than one Super Bowl with the Bills. I think I it, think they'd be okay right, with one right some. now. He could be Ross. <laughs> he could be the, he All could, right, let's pick some games. For two. recreational purposes yeah. only. Not for me. No, These are just strictly kidding. for gambling reasons for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Not for Ian, though. But for right. me, they're gambling because we do do the spread. We'll start with the Jets and the Vikings wrap report. Anything I need to know on these two games? Uh, yes. Jets are not going to have Michael Carter, their running back. So a running back I had not heard of until last week is probably going to get a lot of fantasy yards. Okay. Not only fantasy yards, but also the Jets stick it. Give me the Vikings minus three. Here Even though I don't want to be on a receipts video with Gary V. Okay, yeah, don't no. want it. Ooh. Don't want it. No, I appreciate that? Gary V. I don't want that. Sorry. Broncos Ravens. Ian. Uh, obviously, Lamar favored at home by eight and a half points. The Broncos are quite a sociology experiment right now, <laughs> with many people reporting, including yourself, that half the team went to Russell Wilson's birthday. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Is it? People on right? teammates. Yes. 27 teammates come into the in the middle of the season? That's, that's a lot, isn't it, Ian? I thought it was a lot, but if people took it like it wasn't a lot. I have no idea. Like, if I invite all my friends. Who are the like, people? Who are the people? Your suit your suit friends? Yeah, your Marks. suit friends? Who are the people? Well, I, now I only have non-suit friends. But no, I mean, people, you know, it's the kind of thing where, like, you report on it, and I didn't. I think it was Mike Kliss in Denver, but, like, everyone texts about it because it's such a big hot-button topic. Like, what's a good number? Of, what percentage of friends? I have no idea. Yeah, Kevin Costner, obviously, in draft day. Nobody came to his birthday party. Mm, like, yeah. I think that is Bo why Callahan. people – and it's real. That's right. right. That's very real, though, too. Like, that's a real thing. Have to have a relationship with the locker room. That's why what's going on in Arizona is certainly worth watching uh, between Pat P and Kyler Murray. But, like, what – Ian. Yes. Richest owner in the NFL. Already paid – the quarterback who appears to stink at football now. I don't know why. Maybe an ayahuasca trip. Are they ever going to move on from Russ, or is it? Or are they going to build, continue to build around Russ? Is this going to be because Tepper? You know what Tepper did? Tepper came in, and said, "Give me that coach. Give me that quarterback. Give me another quarterback. Give me another coach. Give me another this. I'm building another facility. Oh, you're not going to pay your half? Well, I'm filing bankruptcy then. Oh, now you're going to sue me for five hundred million? Okay, <laughs> you didn't hold up your end of the bargain. I got lawyers as well. And then he just moved on, moved on, moved on until they got a winner. And I'm not saying like Tepper's business style is anywhere near the same as the Walton family's right. business style because like Tepper bought out some old supervisor of his mansion and just tore it down just to buy the supervisor's mansion. Allegedly like Tepper is, is like a, is like a fuck you type businessman. I think that that's the type of operation he runs. I don't know if the Waltons do that. Do you see them maybe getting a little antsy with moving on to a new experiment for that team? Or you think Russ is there for the long haul? I don't know. I'm nothing's impossible in the NFL. I mean, I remember thinking a couple years ago, the Rams are stuck with Jared Goff, and I don't see how they get out from under the contract. And then they traded him Detroit. and they got Matthew Stafford. And Goff's been actually, honestly, fine. And Good Stafford player. took him to a Super That's Bowl. Right. They so got like four wins over the last two years, five wins. Yeah, mm hell, -hmm. crushing it. True, but the rest of the team stinks too, but they're getting better because they have Dan Campbell, who was on that show at the beginning yeah. of the year, who was great. Anyway, yeah, the draft pick too now. And yeah. The last yeah, and, and they get the Rams like maybe top 10, probably draft pick. I mean, that's, that trade's uh, going to Hold end. on, though. Hold on, though. Yes. Hold on. That was still Goff picking up the full contract, picking up Goff. Foxy, still a loss, right? I mean, that whole trade. Definitely. If this team now had Stafford, it would be fucking unbelievable. Stafford sitting there watching this team going, whoa, offensive line, whoa, run game. I mean, the defense still stinks, but he never had either of those in 12 years in Detroit. Well, hang on a second. Okay. So you, if the, if the Lions – but the Lions could draft a franchise guy with this – 
let's say, fourth overall pick. Wouldn't that be – they? who's it going to be? Whoever it is. Yeah. C.J. Stroud. Right. Someone like I – mean, wouldn't that be worth it, right, as like a Lions fan? Yeah. Two years of no Stafford – rebuild and then you have a franchise guy and the whole point is like normally the lions don't hit on these guys now brad holmes new gm has been great so hopefully they do but yeah i mean at he's the, end the of guy the... that said give us golf's contract though yes mm -hmm. exactly. uh -huh. but maybe they did zoom out and say hey three years down the road right we're we're gonna be able to <laughs> be able to draft somebody <laughs> very good yeah maybe they did you know they said for the next two years we're gonna pay Four hundred million dollars to this guy. We're gonna win like one game for every hundred million we're paying him, mm -hmm. and then three years from now we're gonna be able to get a good quarterback. Maybe, maybe that's what they did at the time. Uh, but nonetheless, do you think Denver? What do you think? Do you think they'll stick with him so, long term or no? Uh, they they almost have to stick with him for another two years, but they don't have to have okay. to. They could just eat an enormous cap hit and just be like, we're gonna be bad. But. I, I, I mean, my guess as to what happens is, like, they're going to have a hard decision. Let's say they have a well-thought-out decision at the end of the year about Nathaniel Hackett. That's the first thing. If they decide to move on from him, which is certainly possible, then my guess is they have a coach who's going to be able to get Russell to play better. That's so, what you said the other day. That's what you said the other day. Do you day. think that's crazy? Well, no, because, like, I don't think it's crazy because that would make sense to me. Like, hey, we paid this guy. What if Sean Payton says, you know what, I'm going to take all that Walmart money and I'm going to go to Denver Ooh. and – I'm going to coach Russell Wilson. Like, would that be worth it? Damn. That so is that sense. something – is that a situation where the Waltons could potentially change the game for coaching salaries there? That could become like, uh, yeah, we're doing business how business is done. Like when Deshaun Watson gets 200 and whatever uh, guaranteed, 230 yeah. uh, from Cleveland, we actually thought to ourselves, you know, and this would be giving a guy a lot of credit, has him. But what if he did that to price out the Cincinnati ownership and the Baltimore ownership who can never pay a quarterback uh -huh. that amount of money right. because of the money that has to be held up in escrow and guarantees, which we're currently watching unfold with Baltimore and Lamar. And we're going to see potentially with Joe Burrow and Cincinnati, even though That's they sold the rights to the stadium and to the bubble that they built. So they're doing business in Cincinnati, which is good news. Oh, yeah, yeah. But could that happen with the Walton family with coaching? Like, do you think there's a chance that they're just going to reset the bar? Because what what is the bar right now? McVay's making what, like $14 million a year or something like that to coach? And then that means Belichick's making $15 million yeah. a year? Uh -huh. And what is – is that what – how like, what is the bar right now? And that's how you would get Sean Payton, right? Because he's going to have his options. And are we all just – under the assumption he's definitely coming back next year, Ian. Uh, I'm not under the assumption that he's definitely coming back. I think he's going to be very, very choosy. So, like, you know, I know he likes L.A. I know that, you know, if there was some sort of L.A. opening, maybe he'd be interested. Denver's pretty close to L.A. If they have an opening, you know, the I, there's a lot of ifs, but I don't think he's going to jump at anything because he just is dying to be back in coaching. I think he likes the TV world. Why would you not like the TV world? It's great, right? Uh, this, is like this. this is the internet. Like this. We're not, not even on fast. We're not, on TV. We're not even on we're not, fast. No, we're not, unfortunately. Not wow. on smart TVs. Hmm, that's, that's disappointing. Um, but I don't think it's. A, I don't think it's a given. But so, but I think he'll be very choosy. But you know, here's the other thing: Would he want to coach Russell Wilson? Does he think well, he that's can the thing. fix like, him? Because the Waltons easily go, all right, $25 million a year. You're our fucking coach. Figure it out. I was like, going to say twenty, some, but yeah, I mean, twenty-five would probably do it too. I mean, that's that's real money. And then what? The other, the next good, Rabel? What's Rabel going to ask for? Like if a team, like, all right, well, I'm going to need $30 million. I mean, it's going to yeah. be like Andy like, Reid. Right, yeah. That like resets the whole, that resets the whole right. market. And all the other owners like, will be mad, just like they were mad fucked. at Haslam. But They'll be fucked. Mm -hmm. They won't, no, they won't be. They'll be just angry, but then pay it. Oh, you think like that's going to happen with the Baltimore, you think? I mean, at some point, they're going to do a deal with Lamar, I think. Maybe, I mean, or not, or just let him be a free agent in three years. And hey, I don't the, know. These big money owners that are coming into the league, could big boy, big bank take little bank, all these other owners if they wanted to. Like, listen, yeah. what happened with Deshaun Watson, 230? If you look at it from a strategy, which, once again, we're giving way too much credit, they priced out a lot of teams of getting the best quarterbacks in the NFL. If you start doing that with coaches, too, you just start pricing out teams that can't afford – uh, a particular coach who's a good coach, that could become a thing. Like, a that could be a point. thing. That's how you you could really, really do that. Wow. Yeah. You've I got mean, Bezos, Jay-Z, and McConaughey coming into Washington yeah, exactly. potentially. Imagine them just being like, it ain't our fault that uh, – the Brown family over in Cincinnati can't pay you, right? That ain't mm -hmm. our fault. We got uh, we got a guy that owns the network. 
some of the games are on Thursdays and Fridays. If you do that, like that could become a thing, Ian. It's good for well, everybody that's getting paid, but it's bad for some teams maybe that don't have big money owners. With you know Walmart I mean? too, sorry, Rapshi. With Walmart too, that that same thought process with Deshaun and the Browns can be used for Russell Wilson because allegedly the Chargers and their owners don't have you know that much money, and Herbert's coming up, so he'll be looking at the Russell Wilson deal like, hey, I deserve probably double this because of how this guy's playing, and they won't have the amount of cash available because that they're kind of strapped for cash. Well, so you've hit on something really interesting because there's a salary cap, obviously, and teams are very limited with what they can pay every player, right? There's a ceiling, and everyone's limited. The two places where there are no limits are coaches' contracts. You can pay whatever you want. So if you want to screw the market or whatever, that's a bad word, but if you want to do that, like, you can do it. Or fully guaranteed money. Like, there's no limit, so you could be like the Browns and, you know what, we're going to change the market and we are going to take advantage of what we have, which is the ability to put up a lot of cash, and we're going to offer this much fully guaranteed. Like, those are the two places that teams could sort of find the market inefficiency and just turn it on its head. And then what? That one per club meeting that happens would just be the loudest of all time in yeah. history? Or mm-hmm. yeah, Everybody be, would be mad, but then they would you're, get over it. Or they would have to get out, right? Then yeah. you're looking for new money all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, it's interesting because that is an advantage. What the Browns did is an advantage for the Browns, not because they get Deshaun Watson. We have no idea how he's going to be on a football field after not playing for two years, let alone everything else that is – very serious and real that is taking place. But like Ravens, they ain't ever. No. They they would never have paid that. Mm-mm. Joey Burrow, Cincinnati, never, ever would have paid that. Now it's like, will you? Can you? Or won't you? And that they're just going to be banking on Joey and Lamar, hopefully taking very, very, very team-friendly deals, even though, to contradict your point completely, salary caps don't matter. All right, let's get to picking some games. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So I like the Ravens, minus eight and a half, even though uh, the Broncos' defense is incredible. Steelers-Falcons, give me the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road against the Atlanta Falcons, minus one and a half. What I saw from Kenny Pickett live with my own eyes, with that offense being able to do their thing, and TJ getting back into the swing of things. I understand the run game is great for Atlanta. Look for Cam Hayward with his big-ass head and his big old Hall of Fame resume to have a big-time game. And also look for the secondary to make some big tackles so that some of those long ones that Cordero Patterson is possible for having doesn't happen. Jags, Lions, give me the the Jacksonville Jaguars in the – Detroit against the Lions strictly wow. because I watched Trevor Lawrence cut a promo to Jordan Palmer and I said, oh, he's a human and he's starting to realize that he's allowed to be a human as opposed to potentially the 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 robot that he was since high school when he was put up in high regards. I like that Jacksonville team, Tennessee Titans, Philadelphia Eagles. I love the Eagles. You hear me? I absolutely love the Eagles. I think they're a bunch of dogs. dogs. In the city of brotherly love, the first ever capital of the United States. But I also like me some Mike Vrabel. So give me the Tennessee Titans plus four and a half. But I think the Eagles win that one. Cleveland Browns, Houston Texans. Give me the Texans plus seven. Yeah. Just because wow. of everything going on. Yeah, it's going to be loud down there. Give me the Texans plus seven. Even though I think there's a chance the Browns win that one. That's a leaner. Washington, New York Giants, Commanders, Taylor Heineke on a roll, taking on the Giants, who everybody loved just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Now they're dogs at home Bye. in the division to the team that put up that statue of oh, Sean yeah. Taylor. Huh. Give me the Giants, plus one and a half okay. at home. Uh, Green Bay Packers, Chicago Bears. Burn up. Need I say more? Aaron hates the city. The city hates Aaron. Give me Green Bay, minus three and a half. Oh, in a game yeah. where we go, oh, the Packers are still in it. Yeah. Don't let them get in a super wild card. They'll start doing some damage. Seahawks, Los Angeles Rams. Give me the Seahawks uh-huh. on the road in L.A. Uh-huh. Just because that doesn't make any sense at all for them to win, they're going to. Then give me the Dolphins in the Niners. Three and a half. Give me the Niners. Minus. Oh, give me the Niners. Minus three and a half. Ooh. Chargers. Raiders. Give me. Raiders are undefeated since the cry press conference. Yep. <laughs> give me the Chargers plus one. Uh, give me Kansas City Chiefs and Bengals. Give me the Chiefs. We just Ooh. talked about that. Yeah. And then obviously in this stadium right behind me. 
you're going to see a team of men come together like they haven't yet this season. The Indianapolis Colts heard all the things that were said about them after they lost on Monday night to the stupid Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? Jeff Saturday and his curly hair is going to be cutting a promo <laughs> to get these boys rolling. It's prime time. It's Jonathan Taylor. It's an offensive line that hasn't been able to find their way, but they will in Jerry World. Oh, yeah. It's a defense that has dogs everywhere. Give me the Colts plus ten and a half. Don't love the money line. Give me the Colts plus ten and a half. That's a lot of points, even though they could get run out of this thing early, like our team did when we played here in 2014 or 15 or something like that. <laughs> Let's go. Well done. All right. I'm energized by all of that. The Bengals Chiefs are well, surprised by, honestly. You know? Oh, yeah. Rematch. Those are Cowboys fans. You oh, getting heckled? You want me to talk to someone about booed. removing them? I'm getting booed right now. What the hell is hey, that about? I appreciate you calling your dad, who's a lawyer. I like that. Well, hey, doctors. Ian, you are that guy, huh? Well, those my people, dad's a lawyer. <laughs> yes. my those dad's, people have been doing weird doctor, stuff for like whatever. For 35 minutes. So You got to go Where, behind me? Yeah, yeah doing got up downs and some other jobs, weird dude. stuff. TCU weird jersey. Stuff. I've yeah. already called security, Pat. They're going to move quickly. They're dabbing. So they got the TV fixed here late, so I appreciate that. Thank you guys for like the last 20 minutes or so. Good I haven't been boys. able to see anything. And I've been so captivated by Ian's charm that I've just been looking at him the whole time and you guys. Uh, but thank you so much, Ian, for traveling out to India and doing this. We really appreciate you doing that. Boys, incredible week this week. Uh, to all of our guests, thank you all so much. Let's win all of our bets, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Not, you, not you, not you, Ian. Oh, not me. Yeah, you Let's can't grab shoot. Us. Let us win all of our yes. bets. Uh -huh. And uh, good luck to all the fantasy players out there this weekend, Ian. Yeah, there, there you go, Because we'll yeah. uh, that, that's just allowed. So you know, and I don't also, want to interrupt. Right. Um, what week is this? 13? 13. Mm -hmm. I'm 11 and 1 in fantasy. All right. 11 and 1. Pretty good. That matters. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. <laughs> really good. Really good. Uh, to all of our fans uh, that watch this show, thank you so much. You're the best people of all time. Have an incredible weekend. We'll be live here from Arlington, Texas tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. local. Oh. Okay. A little, mm. little, little early. Ooh, switch early. A little early. Really wake early. up call tomorrow. Jeez. I'm going with this cap tomorrow, right? Have, have to. to. Have to. It's perfect. Looks damn good. Absolutely perfect. And get some cowboy boots so you can match them with the... Yeah, don't be a man. Come on. I have cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. G Boom. 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 Oh. Boom. 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 Crocodile, what's going on? What are we, what are we working with? Cayman. Cayman Croc. Yes, you got it. Way to go. Good eye, pal. Good eye. Yep. These are Lucchese's. I heard there's another boot company that came by. I appreciate them doing that. I'm pretty loyal. <laughs> Sorry. To, uh, Sorry about it. Pretty loyal. Got a lot of these. Uh, they're good people, oh. but I'm open. I'm open for conversations, of oh, course. Wow. Uh, thank you all so much. Ian, crush it this last hour, pal. I can't wait to see what you guys give away. Hell yeah. Uh, we have to give away something. You have yeah, to. Your phone. Yeah. Yep. Shoot. Can I wipe it clean first? Nope. nope. Mm -mm. All right. We'll let you know. Babes in Pecan well, Lodge, Pat. Babes in Pecan Lodge. Those are your spots. Hey, just, j just want to let you know. Just like we talked earlier about always being on, mm -hmm. everything that's in your phone, anybody can see it at any point. Boom. You need to know that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Be careful. Think about that. I got to go. Like there's some <laughs> there's some 12 year old who's sitting in some building over here that could just hack into all of our phones right now if they wanted to and just be like, boop, boop, boom. So remember that as you're living your life. Just remember that as you're out there. Very that's that's happening. Goodbye. So maybe clean your cookies uh, off your uh, safari there. Yep. There. Good Ian idea. Rappaport. Jeez Louise. Delete your search what, what history. What type of pig is hosting the show right now? What, what are you? He's crazy. He's a drunk. What are you boy. searching? Huh? Oh, oh, who's this guy got? Should he's I, got Blancy Should I not be accepting all cookies? <laughs> <laughs> I accept all cookies. Should I not be? No one told me not to accept don't any accept cookies. cookies. Never. Especially from well, strangers. Never accept cookies? cookies? Not from strangers. Hold on. They don't let you do anything now, though. Like, you have to accept cookies, don't you, on everything? Yeah. yeah. I always like, every, accept every, the cookies. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, but I don't think you're supposed to. I think it's become a new thing where you just like they force you to on all these websites. Huh. That's why Twitter, thank God it's still alive. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> yes. Our lives Even are much They got a lot of cookies to deal with over there. They, they got a lot of cookies. Yeah, to, lot they of banned. Hey. Hey, they kicked. Yeah, he's they at. They kicked yay off yep. the platform. Out they said, yay, listen. Yeah, yay, you're really tough. Elon's like, yay. I'm like a free speech guy, but like. You're really fucking being an asshole. Like, like uh, I'm, my whole thing, and it's like first couple of weeks I own this thing, yay. Like, free speech, free speech, free speech. And then you come in here, like, yeah, this is free speech, Jen. And then you kind of give uh, everybody that's against me all the ammo that I've been fighting mm -hmm. against, yay. Could mm -hmm. you maybe not be like, 
that hateful mean and you know just try to tear it all down in one night i mean i play golf with chris paul yeah yeah whoa that's right He's a good guy he had a, he had a wild night last night yeah. chris paul. <laughs> he is the most chris paul had a, he is the easiest he is the easiest out of all time honey you're gonna believe what chris what, did you see what this guy said earlier in the day? You're going to believe what this fucking guy said? Oh, you're going to believe the guy who was wearing a mask no. on with Alex Jones. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Why was he wearing how a about, mask? Bro, how about, how about Alex Jones in that one clip going, and this is Alex Jones we're talking about. Nazis are bad people. They're thugs. They do terrible <laughs> things. <laughs> they, they are. Really they are bad. I, that, 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 my belief, he said. Like he was taking my belief. Strong bad chance. people do terrible things, everything. And then off camera, a man in a ski mask whose name is formerly Kanye West goes, Yeah, but we got always, we can't always just put them down though. Like, what, dude? Yeah. What yeah. is that? How, how is this even? Uh, also, did some research, even, Pat. Uh, highways was not invented by Nazis and microphones also not invented. <laughs> you by don't say. So, uh, you I, don't I did, yeah. Say. yeah. So if he was wrong on that, was he wrong on Chris Paul as well? Ooh. Yeah. Probably. Well, if I'm Chris Paul. Yep. When I'm walking into the house, I'm certainly using that as exhibit A. And then yeah. how about one? Oh, here's one. Here's a star David with a swastika in the middle of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's another one. Here's another. This. Here's another. You know. And uh, I went over there to uh, Germany and, and toured. Uh, uh, which I wish I remember which one it was. Was it, it was one of the camps? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I mean, that's just a. That's one that that's the I think big one. Has yeah. a, I think it's in Poland. I don't know. I think it, it was is. Dachau. Dachau, yeah. Dachau, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I went to Dachau, I wow. think. And I was a teenager when I was over there playing soccer, and they kind of walked it around. It's like I would recommend anybody that has, you know, any questions to just take a trip over there one time and then just, you know, change your view on the whole. Every, it was fucking. They had pictures of all this stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm like a 13-year-old, 14-year-old. And I'm seeing these photos and everything going on. It's, it's like, I don't know how that could even be a thing. It seemingly is. But at some point, hopefully the world will all recognize. And, and remember, we'll all be in one place. Remember? We're all dreaming of this oh, reality. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. We're all dream We're currently in this one, though. We got to remember that as we're trying to get here. We'll get there someday, though, won't we? Yeah. We'll Hell yeah. Someday. Amen. Hell yeah. Won't we? Crap. Yeah. We'll get there someday. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. Whoops. Hit the microphone again. Third time. Sorry. Not created by Nazis. No, no. no. Friend that you just said. American no. made. I was, uh, Pat, before you go, <laughs> this is important. So I was uh, settling into my new spot here, which mm. is really nice, by the way. Um, and I was nervous about, because I see you on this and you're kind of above the microphone. I was nervous that people would not be able to hear me. So I was like, make sure that I'm close enough to the microphone. And then I get here and what I realize is I'm here and you're like here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if they can hear you, they can definitely hear me. Uh -huh. And it was really yeah. a tough moment I, for me. I got about a half a face on you. Yeah, half a face. I think that's no what you just, uh, yeah, yeah, you just did. Whole head, I'd say. But. No, did I wouldn't they, say that. The boys were planning some uh, things to make you like a little taller on the seat or up there. I'm happy they didn't do that because I told them we are not a sizest no, no, operation. Not at all. As Foxy zooms out here, I you do kind of look like one of those mini figurine things. No, mm -hmm. I don't think so. That kind of get put in the set. Hold on, let me be big. Is this about bigger yeah. now? Yeah. That did it. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yep. Kind of made it worse. Did you think about where, Ian, or uh, yeah. Connor, you look like your guy Fietti, the top of your hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Gangster. That is amazing. Gangster, Thank you for dude. blocking that camera that yesterday, really too. funny. Wow. Um, Ian, yes. I appreciate you, man. You're awesome. Thank you for doing this. Not a lot of people would for us, and we're very, very thankful for that. So keep crushing it. I'm going to get out of here. Somebody else is supposed to be on this stage. Oh I appreciate all you guys. Goodbye. Super. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. It's our third guest, Pat McAfee. Herb Street was our second guest. Yep. True. Great point, right? Buddy, I was actually thinking of maybe asking Herb Street to come on, but I was like, I don't know if he has time for a show sure. like this. And then there he was. Boom. Seeming like he had nothing but time. Flacco was on the show one time like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Similar situation. We had, I think, Brandon McManus on, and yeah. Flacco was right next to him. And we said, hey, say a few words so I could put him in the uh, the podcast title. <coughs> Duped a lot of people. Hey, we got Joe Flacco on today. That is amazing. It's pretty cool. No big deal. Breaking news yeah. while uh, Pat was on. Uh oh, what we got? Stafford has cleared the concussion protocol, but he's not going to play. Okay. Season's over. Yep. Did they say season's over? No, they did not. Yeah, but we but if he's say. healthy and he's not playing, wait, he's not, over. They, what'd they say? Just not, I mean, I guess I could look it up. It says, uh, according to Sean McVay, 
quarterback Matthew Stafford has cleared the concussion protocol. He will still not be out. He's, so he will still be out. On so Sunday. just week thirteen that we know. Of. Okay. So that's so that's actually so this has been. And I don't know how much you guys want to go into concussion protocol stuff with Stafford, but I did some reporting on this last week. When I'm not standing in front of this regular-sized desk on an Internet show, I do some reporting. And uh, Stafford was not diagnosed with a concussion the second time. Oh. He was like placed. Tua. Neck back right. injury. Not like that. So he, was, he had a concussion the first time, went to see, I believe, two concussion experts, was not diagnosed with a concussion, but because the team couldn't rule it out during the game, he was placed in the protocol and ended up being a neck injury. That was probably more like a stinger than anything else. So he had kind of lost some feeling in his legs. That came back. That was getting better by last week. Now is better, so he is cleared, but still not going to play this week. And then the biggest question is, like, they, and they've been pretty clear that they do not plan to shut him down, but then it's like, what do you do? Like, Shut him down. Good question. I mean, yeah. their season's over. It's but but way but over. then, which usually I'd be like, obviously you're right. Like yeah. shut him down, lose, and then get a. I would never support losing on purpose. I'm just tanking. Saying. Right, that's against the rules. Um, I guess there really is no tanking either because they don't get their first. Right, round pick. doesn't that so, change everything? True. So what are they? Just, I mean, that's playing season, for pride. I don't know. <laughs> their season, like Aaron Donald's out now. Like just fucking right. Yeah. I mean, just T- just take an extra off season, longer one. But. Uh, they got, I mean, there's no chance. I mean, look at that. So that would be if, if – and look, I, I know the Rams do all of this by design, right? But if they had that draft pick, there'd be a real argument to, like, play the young guys, yeah. or, but they don't. So why would Stafford not play? Because he doesn't want to die on the field. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I just noticed looking at this, like – What's up? It's going to hurt when my team, the Steelers – have the 14th pick and they just have one more pit win than the fucking team that has the second overall pick. That's just going to be, that's going to sting at the end of the year. Yeah, it's going to be tough. When was the last time four of the top 10 picks were have traded? Same record. Like other teams. Didn't we do this last year? Did the Justin Giants had two last year, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. was there any other team that had yes. a trade uh, draft? Who Lions. The Lions. The Lions had a second, or no, they had pick they number first. 32. Yeah. But that was the trade, right, but they, they traded trade 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 for, for Jameson was Williams, enough. which I have a question for you. When can Lions fans expect Jameson Williams? The Jets had two last year as well. Jets right? had two. Giants, Giants had two. two. Yeah. Giants had, or Jets actually had three in the first round. Almost had four. Yeah. yeah. They it's tried to you – you know, we know this by now, but they tried to make it four with Brees Hall, who they think is going to be an absolute rock star. He like was. Right. Oh, I have a question about yes. the Jets. Go ahead. You mentioned the rookie running back who played last week. Why was James Robinson a healthy scratch? Didn't work out in Jacksonville, apparently, and now he's a healthy scratch with the Jets. Do we know why? Yeah, I mean, they talked about how they wanted uh, a little more juice, they say, like a little more speed, a little more kind of like big play. Yeah. Urgency. A little more urgency, and they got it. And uh, James Robinson was not happy, and obviously they traded for him, so like, I think they would like him sure. to be work good. Out. Yeah. However, similar to Zach Wilson, like, the only thing that really matters is just do you win games, and that guy helped them win games. So like that – I think that was okay, but James Robinson will probably not be happy if he's inactive again, and that's maybe he's not because Michael, Tur- Carter, Michael Carter. Carter's going to be out. Um, Jameson Williams, your question. Um, so he, this is his, I believe, second week of practice. Sounds like he looked good. I knew he wasn't going to play after the first week. There's a chance that he's activated Saturday. Mm. Um, oh, I would say. I don't know for sure now, but I know he's in a place physically where he could play. Oh, I love it. Let's go. So, like, and this is going to be one of the most interesting things because nobody trades all the way up for a receiver. Right. Many people thought if he had no knee injury, this would be the top receiver. And we've seen some good ones. Like, Olave's really good. Mm -hmm. Um, Drake London's really good. Like, there's some good receivers. Mm -hmm. I think most people, yeah, most people agree. George Pickens. Dog. Dog. George Pickens is pretty good. Watson too. Yeah. Very good. Wilson, yeah. Garrett Wilson's Wilson. Awesome. I mean, this it's like all these receivers. It's like the last five when, years. Traylon Burks. They've been so down. Traylon down. Burks. Traylon oh, Burks. Like, well, who, against Packers. Everybody you know? killed. You know, everyone killed the uh, Titans for the AJ Brown trade. Mm-hmm. But like, there is a possibility that this ends up being like the Jefferson uh, Diggs. Diggs trade. Mm. It's like Burks has been good. Yeah, he's been pretty good. Last Post. two weeks, yeah. And, you know, got to do this, but. Um, but the Lions thought Jamison Williams was a guy that you would trade a, you know, premium pick for. He, he probably would have been up. the top wide receiver. He didn't. Yeah. So, what if he's good? 
Could be. Feels like he might be. He looks very fast be. in all the videos <laughs> I'm watching. Really? I mean, he looks like the probably the fastest guy in the NFL at this point in those videos. Oh. Is it one of those uh, sped up like draft videos? Uh, it was like a five yard race. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, who do we do Quirky that with? Shit. Who was it? It wasn't McCaffrey, was it? Who released a video and it, it was so fast and everyone's like, is that sped up coming out? Who's we? The NFL mm-hmm. or? Not we. We, the NFL. The player? Twitter community. Do you I remember know. this? No, I no. remember it, but I don't know who. So it was. wait, the NFL media Twitter accounts putting out uh, videos, no. false videos. No, Whoa. not we Whoa. would never do that. But oh. sometimes Whoa. videos get released oh. from players during training where you're like, Whoa. "Is that sped up?" Whoa. I mean, people were saying that about the flipped Tua video. True. I remember that this year. <laughs> yep. Where they said it, where they flipped the video to make him a righty, and it changed their perspective. But that it looked like that was sped up by like half a second. Yeah. Did it? Yes, I believe it was. <laughs> I like that guy who was internet famous for for like a couple days for flipping videos. Like that guy had Smart. his moment. Like well, genius. It did look cool. Like too. flipping houses or no, no, no. No, like she didn't them. make money. Oh, that's a shame. Like making two a, a right like mirroring Remember? the image. Yeah, mirroring. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. For that sure. guy became famous for like a little bit. I mean, seeing Tua huck deep balls as a righty. Whew. Game changer. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. You're such idiots. This guy's a stud. <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. That was my thought. I got a frantic text from Albert Breer when that happened. I was like, can you believe this? <laughs> Look how good he looks. <laughs> I'm like, it's literally the same guy. He's just righty, not lefty. It does look yeah, just goofy. Look yeah. Anyway, so we got Pat's picks. I'm pretty sure he was right on all of them. Mm-hmm. Don't um, have to take them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say we could do that. Um, sorry, somebody was in my ear. Oh, what there you go. Oh, I was going to say. I wonder what his name is. But when you're, when you're on <laughs> TV and you're hosting, someone can talk to you in your, in your ear and, and tell you things. Yeah, yeah for sure. Hell yeah. Let's go to a five-minute break. Okay. Movie magic. We'll do whatever we do during breaks. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll come Blues. back. We'll crush it. Yes. And then we'll end the show, yeah. and then that'll be it. And we'll see yeah. if I get to come back. Do a giveaway. Okay. We'll do yeah. a giveaway? Yeah, we'll oh, do yeah. a giveaway. We'll do a giveaway. Give, take my phone. Well, sure. yeah, we'll probably have you putt just because you're such Seriously? an avid golfer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Putt or maybe huck a football into the uh, – Probably putt. Probably putt, though. Right. Right. Let's go. Sure. Go right. to a break. Okay. Go away, but come back in five minutes, and we'll be right back. Take five minutes. Take five Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. I used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings South Dakota. Let's go! College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Let's see Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Luke! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Serious. Go! Yes! Go! Yes! He's being stick with that 15. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! But I'm going Trey. Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend Kirk. You look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000. And when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker 
was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota marker is back and beautiful. Brooklyn South Dakota, the Terry School. They might be the Jack Rabbits, but they're the GOATs today. Ladies and gentlemen, South Dakota State with the win. I told you I came on your radio show that we were going to get you on top of the day. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know. to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single NFL locker room. Like, yeah, cool. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. Not a bad little day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room with the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. <sighs> what an awesome opportunity. You know, it's just like I'm frustrated with flying cars because I'm obsessed with that. Like, I, want, I, want, I mean, I want a flying car. Hey, me too. What I got is my phone instead. It's like, well, the future is on your phone really right now. It's not like literally in front of you. You can't get into a flying car. But, you know, your phone has it all. It's like, I don't want this phone. I'm not going to have this phone 14 hours a day like you young people do. No, thank you. Like, I'm not from that generation. Like, you know, give me a flying car. You know? <laughs> and, and, and honestly, when we shut down the Mars missions, you know, we were supposed to be going in 2024 and, and we shut it down. But a lot of people don't realize is, you know, from here to the moon is 208,000 miles roughly. You know, 200, so you can think about that. Well, in this country, you know, a long road trip could be 4,000 miles. and you know, how far it is to Australia, you know, so 200,000 miles, you know, that you think about that, and, you know, that's far, but, but like Mars, think about this, is 250 million miles, 250 million miles. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's a little different thing because, you know, when you go, you know, it, it takes about anywhere from, you know, nine to 11 months to get there, depending on the alignment. <laughs> are you going to fucking Mars? And so, Jim, are you going to Mars? It sounds like you're- <laughs> I wish I was, uh, I, you know, maybe you'll have, I think you have a chance to do a show from there when you're 80, back. <laughs> The guy that didn't even stop after just deboing your head coach, well, let's get him the fuck out of the building. I, I mean, unless he just hates McVay, which we need to maybe look into a little bit more. I'm sure he wouldn't not know that that happened. Maybe he was trying to get as far away from it as possible. But whenever he didn't stop, I thought to myself, whoa, are the Rams? What the hell's going on? What's going on with the Rams? Oh, dead. That's the head coach who just got blown up and nobody even stopped to see if he was okay. Aside from a couple coaches, the guy that hit him just keeps on fucking jogging on the field. Not even a, oh my God. Yeah, like, coach. I'm so sorry. Not even one of those guys. He couldn't have known. He couldn't have known it was a head coach. If that happens on the field, they're pulling Sean into the blue tent. Hey, are you sure you're okay? Yeah. I mean, you didn't fall. You didn't drop the ball. You just got hit right on the button that we're talking about. Sean McVay eats it, spits it out, puts the headset back on. Thought his commentating career was in jeopardy. Sure. He's That's allegedly true. been offered 15 to $20 million to go into the booth, which I think we're going to see a lot sooner then later yeah. with how this whole Rams thing is going. Bounces back, calls the rest of it again. Now they lose, they are not good, but he's a tough son of a bitch. I think we all need to start recognizing that a little bit more about McVay. Can you imagine how fucking sore he is today? He's eating out of a straw for the next week. Because who knows what's gonna happen with the Jets, Mike White. Yeah. Awesome. Look yeah. at Like I think I, I probably should have been number one overall pick. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> Mike White. <laughs> yeah. Now listen, he had one incredible game and, yeah. a, and uh -huh. a drive that looked like he, he was going to be unstoppable. But the Jets locker room is chanting Mike White's name. He actually <laughs> said they won't stop chanting my name. So a couple quick things. Is Zach Wilson present when the entire oh. locker room is chanting Mike White's name? <laughs> I hope not. Because the fans are doing it. Now his teammates are doing it. <laughs> yeah. And then 
Mike White saying, I think I should have been number one overall pick. Is that him saying, Zach, number two? I don't know if you remember that. I remember. Like, the, all oh. these subliminal potential messages that are being sent out, not from Mike White to deal with. But it is awesome to kind of get a grasp that in that building, I believe there is a real belief. Like, hey, this guy is our guy going forward. Why not this guy who appears to be much better than the other guy? I'm excited to see how the Joe Douglas level that drafted Zach Wilson number two overall. They also signed Mike White, by the way. Yeah. I wonder how they'll deal with that since they invested that whole thing. And Zach Wilson said, yeah, you're right. I probably could learn some things from Mike White. Yeah, ball Let me sit back and watch this thing. I believe Zach Wilson did also say, like, you know, when you look at it, I do need to play more like Mike White does. So I think Self mentally aware. he might already That's be smart. saying, He's like, hey, uh -huh. get me out of here. I can't beat this guy. Out. Oh, okay. You this guy's a legend. That's what he's thinking. Maybe that is the case. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. I am definitely, most certainly not Pat McAfee. Nope. I'm Ian Rappaport, not capably filling in for our guy who was just hanging out with us in Dallas-ish, wearing a cowboy hat and, as I've now learned, cowboy boots that yep. he's had for a very long time. Yeah, long right. time. Over a year. Uh, welcome back to the FanDuel Thunderdome. Uh, we uh, have some more fun things to talk about, oh, sure. yeah. including football uh -huh. and other things. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, what I would like to do right out of the break is my understanding that Tone yeah. has a little segment. Oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. Cut. Has oh. a big segment. No, it's a little. Is it a little? <laughs> no, it's huge. It's okay. massive. A little segment. Depends on if. Nope, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, no, I was not. There was a couple of things that went in my head, too, but I'm, just do your thing. Depends do on you think. the angle. Do, it, What's your angle? I, do your thing. Lighting. Go. I have nothing to add. Okay, so. and uh, you, uh, this is your first time here, and uh, it seems like you've never watched the show on a Friday, so you wouldn't know. Oh. Um, it's true, oh. Fucking Friday, in this hour, we get fucking twisted. Let's what? get fucking twisted. Twisted. You're going to like what? this because it involves alcohol. Fucking go. Oh, 5% go. ABV twisted tea. What? Tastes like real tea. Why? Why? Because it's brewed with real tea. Goddamn right. It's delicious. Okay, so what we do, Ian, is on Wednesday, we show the standings uh, or the, the playoff rankings that the committee came up with. And I pick a team and I say, that's bullshit. Okay. Yeah, that's bullcrap. <laughs> and I fucking I twist it. Okay. Okay. This week. Oh! That, whoa! No, what? Didn't, that's didn't happen it. yet. Oh, okay. you, you guys well, why do this, get twisted? You guys yeah. do this every week. That's, that's a not spin. a twist. That was a spin. Oh, oh okay. Now we, gotcha. now okay. we twist. This week I said, let's drop one of these teams out of the top ten and let's put a new one in, Jeez. okay? Jeez. Are we going to get fucking twisted? Tw twist it. Drum roll, drum okay. roll, drum roll. Let's week. get fucking twisted, Tony! Oh! 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 Bye bye, Dabo! Sorry, dat boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm so fucking sick, sick of Clemson. Okay, they were only in there because of their name. They stink. Okay, yeah, there's no do. reason they're in there. Now, did they beat Florida State that I put in? Sure. Okay, but that was a long time ago. Long. Florida, Florida State. LSU just said Florida State's the best team they played all season. LSU's played some really good teams this year. There was a little bit of stretch where Florida State did lose three in a row. Look, they're goddamn Mike Norvell's got them boys buzzing. He, he does. does. Yeah, and he watch does. out for K State tomorrow. Is K State's name still getting twisted, or they is are, it just the sunglasses? I think it's my eyes. Whoa. No, they. I the think case, it's my eyes too. They are twisted. They okay. are twisted. Because okay. okay. they went from ten to nine. They, yeah, they've had a couple of uh, twisted Florida State teams, came in. Looks like. uh, yeah, so they're you, all blurred. If you <laughs> guess that, uh, Bruce will be reaching out to you. Uh, not everyone who guessed it. Okay, you get put in a randomizer. Two people, I believe. Two people. Well, this week is last four. Four this oh, week. four people this yep. week, uh, if you had this correct. Not everyone, okay? It's not how the giveaways work. Everybody no. can't win. Sorry. Okay? But that's how, that's how it is, okay? Thanks, Rap. Appreciate you for you letting me do my little segment. That was a good segment. A big yeah. seg. Um, Are you a big college football guy or no? No. Uh, I love college football. And, like, it's funny. So I covered Mississippi State for two years, and I covered Alabama for three years. And people ask me, even still now, like, do you miss it? And I love the NFL. Were you there for the poop years of Alabama? Well, I was there for uh, six and seven, seven and six, and then ten and two. Okay. So I, when I took the job covering Alabama, which I didn't even really – like I wasn't even that into. I was covering Mississippi State. I thought that was great. 
and hanging with Ross. And I was with Ross, right? And I got an offer to cover Alabama for the Birmingham News, and I was like, ah, I don't know. And my wife was from Mississippi, was like, you're an idiot. This is Alabama. You should definitely take this job. And I'm like, okay. She's usually right. So I took it, and it was a regular job. It was good. Yeah. Like, out, covered Alabama. Mike Shula was there. It was totally fine. Mm-hmm. And then Nick Saban got hired, and my world literally exploded. Like, it was like nothing. Every single thing that I wrote, every single thing that I reported was, like, scrutinized on the Internet like never before. Mm-hmm. They ran the – it was the first time I'd ever seen this. Press conferences live – because Nick Saban press conferences were so must-see internet that everybody watched. So I would ask a question, and then there'd be a debate on the internet about my question. I called him Nick because his name oh, no. oh, is don't Nick. Do that. Coach. No, it's yeah. Coach Saban. Right. And that was a really a little respect. big deal. Paul Feinbaum Guy had a good NFL career. would literally destroy me on a regular basis on air. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, did it? Well, I thought you heard what Feinbaum said yeah, that one time. Something along the lines of like, this Ian Rappaport guy is a big dumb dipshit. He doesn't have any respect for Coach Nick Saban at all. Okay. <laughs> Get what I did there? That rap sheet, calling him Nick and Coach Saban. This guy's a moron. He does not deserve to have. <laughs> This job at Alabama. Yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah, I, th- I thought he that got brought up the other day for some reason. <laughs> you just do that on command. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Or, yeah, sometimes. If it's in the role, of yeah, for sure. That is, that is very good. Oh, mm-hmm. thank you. He uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, at one point, <laughs> at one point when during the Saban year, during the uh, Shuli years, and they sucked, and they had some bad loss, I forget, and I called up Mike Shula. And I got his comments on Alabama, and the comments were sort of like how they needed more time or something like that. I can't remember. And Feinbaum was basically like, I'm not going to do the accent because I'm not good at that. He sure. was like, we got this greenhorn oh, from nice. the north. And he called me a greenhorn, which I think is an insult. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And we got this greenhorn, greenhorn from yank. the north who's so young, who oh. doesn't know anything, and he's calling daddy, and he's asking him for his opinion. And it was just a whole segment. It was on me and how much I saw. Jeez. Has Have you guys talked since? Back? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. We've since. And, but he doesn't. That's one thing is, like, it's not personal. No. And I and I, as – I'm sure you guys could probably tell when I get criticized, I really don't care. Like, mm-hmm. it sure. does, do not care. Um, but part of that is because at Alabama, I got criticized so much that at some point you stop worrying about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And he knows it's not personal. So he would like rip me and then be nice to me in this like couple days later because it's like, eh, sorry, I had to trash you a little bit. Son of a bitch. Yeah. But then so. Who does this greenhorn dipshit? <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell I had to tell my mom that she was not allowed to comment on the internet mm-hmm. about the mean things that Paul Feinbaum was saying about. That's, me. that's oh, yeah. smart. She's got to get out of there if she is still in there. No, she, believe me, my family knows. I'm, there were times I'm sure my lovely wife would like to comment, but she knows that she is not allowed to do that. Yeah, there's no point. Well, you would think you being from Gloucester, like you would have. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's not throw a rap sheet into Gloucester. Okay, Tony. I thought he was originally a greenhorn on the Andrea Gale, but luckily <laughs> fucking didn't go out that that tough trip. Those greenhorns are tough sons of bitches. Yeah, they I'll are. Tell you that much. They are. They hurt. No oh, tougher yeah. than on the Northwestern fucking Captain Zig. Zig and the boys. So to answer your question, um, so when I was covering Alabama, one thing I would love, and it was, you know, the week leading up to it was always stressful. It was who's getting what story and who's playing. And, like, there's always some stuff that happened before kickoff, like somebody suspended – it was really, really, really high stress. And then, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning, you'd walk around, like, the, the field at Alabama. Not the actual field, but, like, the, the green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'd see everybody dressed up. All the guys dressed up in ties. The women, which I was definitely not interested in, nice. dressed up in dresses. I assume I wasn't really looking. And <laughs> it was nice. so – Good cover. Like, the energy was so high. And it was so – like, the anticipation was so much – and the ceremony was so great that, like, it was awesome. And the NFL doesn't have that. The NFL just has amazing drama in their games. Yeah. But I miss that, like... The pageantry. Nothing can happen in this next hour, and I'm going to enjoy watching these people, like, with anticipation, get ready for college football. Like, that was fun. Yeah, it is just two completely different animals. Like, same sport, but just polar opposites, mm-hmm. it feels like, as far as, like, the game and the prep, obviously the game, but, like, the surrounding fans even. Like, it just doesn't feel like there's... Uh, a similar correlation. I, 
honestly, you could probably speak on it better. Would you say it's more diehard loyal in college? Or I guess where you were, it's probably hard to generalize it like that because Alabama's the pinnacle and like it's – you know, it's much different than if you if you were to compare them and the Houston Texans. But would you say like how would you um, like differentiate the two fanhoods? Well, I mean, I was I was in Mississippi State too, and like I almost can't even describe it. Like someone was asking, my wife and I were in a conversation the other day, and someone was asking about recruits, and they were saying like, oh, in Mississippi, you know, do you have to recruit people? It's like Mississippi State, but all for, versus Ole Miss. And I was trying to explain, like, it's not really like that. You either grow up in a state family or you don't, mm. or you grow up in an Ole Miss family. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's who you are. Yeah. It's not like, oh, well, let's, you know, convince this guy to like Mississippi State. Like, you do or you don't. Yeah. Um, go and, Bama and Auburn. Right. Mm -hmm. Same, like, like, no one would convince someone who lives in, like, Opelika to go to <laughs> – that's a place, in, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, convince him to go to Alabama. You just – you're an Auburn guy and that's just what you are. Yeah. So. The NFL doesn't really have that, except maybe like a couple of the crazy fan bases, Bills, Browns, mm -hmm. Raiders, you know, some of those. Um, but like it is a life in college football. And that's why like the internet presence is so much greater in college football because like it is life. Yeah. It's yeah. just a different story. And less games too probably mm -hmm. um, goes into it. That's why the college football playoff expanding. It's probably only going to make that stuff bigger. Like I was so annoyed yesterday. Did you guys see the reaction like from – and I don't mean to – I know I brought him up once before, but my friend Breer, who I like. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I mean, he is insufferable during Ohio State. Oh, games. he's the worst. He knows it too. Mm -hmm. His yeah, tweet – I, I, yes. I, when he sent it uh, about the dorks celebrating in Michigan – uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I almost unfollowed. Anyway, uh, he's an idiot. But he was talking about how the playoff will diminish the regular season. I feel like it's the opposite. Yeah. Right? No yeah. doubt. Makes the like, conference championship games more important, which, like, right now, they kind of don't mean shit. I right. Mean, yeah. you know, I think it'll, it'll, it'll go both ways. Sure, some games will mean less. Okay. Like, the Ohio State-Michigan one meant a lot this weekend because mm -hmm. only one of them was most likely going to get in. But yeah. there will be other times where fucking, like, now, LSU, Georgia this weekend, which means pretty yes. much nothing in the playoff scenario, will mean a lot because the conference champion will get a buy or however it's going to work or whatever. Right. Something like and that. Like, there's going to be some games that mean less, some games that mean more. Yeah. It's the same face. Well, and you would potentially have, you know, like in the Big Ten this weekend, and, and it probably wouldn't happen with 12, but also like a team like Purdue who has, you know, really no business being in the Big Ten championship. If they win, they have an outside shot at now getting like a 12 seed and getting in if they do win the Big Ten ch championship. Same with like Kansas State and uh, – sure. Utah, it's nice. right. like win and they're in or lose, and you're definitely out of the top twelve. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that, I think that's Very pretty much so. sweet. Yeah, that is. It, it's so interesting. More teams in playoffs always better, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, and also like it's not like the regular season sacred. Like I love the NFL regular season, but like if the Patriots had won last night, which as we know was not going to happen, yeah. but if the Patriots had won, it wouldn't have like ruined. Like still intriguing, still interesting, still fun to discuss. Like just because it wasn't like. Win and you're a champion, lose and you die. Like it's still fun. Oh yeah, yeah. it's huge. And like even just talking about it now, like the game, the game weekends now. Like <clears> it's <throat> New Year's Day and New Year's Eve, but now it would be, you know, either Christmas Eve or Christmas for that first round of uh, college football playoff games, right? And then the final uh, four teams or the final uh, eight teams, whatever the fuck it is, I can't think. Also, right having now. those games be like at a team's campus where you know yes. you have like a, a mm. massive high profile game against two teams that would typically never play each other, you know, more than likely, yeah. especially at uh, a non neutral site. Yeah. Well, you got a little, little got news? bit of news there. Uh, yeah, first of all, my mom just texted me and said she did not comment. She just wanted to comment. Shout okay. out. Yeah, well, that was nice. She, she says her thoughts were R-rated, so she curses more than I do. Love that, Esther. Esther. Um, Esther. Esther Rappaport, that's a hell of a name. It's a great name. Yeah. yeah. Strong. Um, Justin Fields. Uh -huh. Oh. Bird down. Full participation today oh, yeah. off the injury report. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So he will start. He's got fresh legs. Bear down. Kind of... Kind of interesting. It makes the game a lot. Um, probably wasn't going to watch Trevor Simeon. <laughs> no, he's now, still injured, by the way. I love watching but, Justin Well, if Fields. it was Nathan Peterman, I oh, for Trevor sure would have watched. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, we were talking about the Patriots before and, like, you know, the, the dynasty. And I, I disagree with Pat, which I would definitely tell him to his face, but hopefully he's not hearing this. 
I disagree with him. The Patriots dynasty is over because I think it's way too early to say that. Plus, there's a whole graveyard of people who've ended the Patriots dynasty over the last couple of years. But it was Burn alarming out. to me that instead of like usually the Patriots cancel people, like they canceled Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. they kind of help create Justin Fields. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. What? Like I was there. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I was on a <laughs> cooking show on the Food Network. Yeah, right. that's right. Has that aired yet? Uh, no, it airs uh, early January. Uh-huh. I've heard my episodes. No, I haven't heard this, but my episodes are hopefully good. Hopefully, I'm in it a lot. That's Plural. The most that's what Max said. <laughs> yeah, he said it was so tailgate good. take that. I was so annoyed. Oh my god. He, I told you guys, he wanted to come here today. I told Pat. Oh, he was sure. like, "You're going to be on the Pat McAfee show. Can I come? Why not?" And Why I'm like, "Did you bring him?" I didn't want to show up with my son the first time I'm doing this. That's cool. I respect so that. So next yeah. time I, I told him he can miss that. school and he can come hang out. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. Absolutely. That'd be fun. Um, he sits down and shut up the entire time. I mean, he's, it's, <laughs> he's not going to. He's going to come and he'll be like, can I just have my, can I just, oh, he just thinks he should talk all the time. Hell yeah. Um, it's stuck in one of the holes in that <laughs> net over hey, there. Dad! <laughs> shut up. I mean, you're going to want to like. Shove them in there. No, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Kids are fine. But yeah, yeah Fields, sure. they did. Anyway, so get I was there that night because we had finished shooting. I was in the state, and I was like, I could not believe that basically the Bears figured it out mm-hmm. against the Patriots. That never happens. And I left that stadium being like, I think Justin Fields is going to be good because yeah. the Bears coaches are apparently awesome and have like. Do so you think Eberflus is smarter than uh, Belichick? I think, uh, no. Uh, but I mean, that's kind of what you just said. I think Luke Getzey, the offensive coordinator, yes, 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 is yes. has done what not all coaches do, which is like I have this system, I have this player with this skill set, and I'm going to ignore what I quote unquote do, and I'm just going to tell everything to him. And it was awesome. Yeah, it's Ravens with Lamar. Like I exactly. feel like they just figured it out. Like hey, we should use Fields way. It's it what is. Nagy could not um, figure out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I Nagy know. knows everything. He knew Mahomes was the guy. But right. uh, how great was that? It was I mean, sweet. It was awesome. Have we heard that? We have not heard that, right? The was, story from a home before we about have time for that? him oh. being told the uh, oh yeah the team sort of yeah I guess yeah. you have the clip, yeah so right? Patrick Mahomes for those who don't know Mahomes went on the oh, yeah. Kelsey Brothers New Heights New Heights pod Ke- New Heights podcast yeah. mm-hmm. and told this story which is awesome. Yeah. The first day that I met Coach Reed was at the facility. We had, like, the uh, meetings, like the top 30 visits. So I was in there for, like, five hours. Just He's just going grilled. through plays, going through plays. And uh, I'm going just going to give you all the inside scoop. Uh, Matt Nagy, who was the offense yep. coordinator then, he really liked me. So he gave me the plays they were going to go over the night before. So Coach Reed's finding out here live on New Heights oh Podcast. Oh, my gosh. Matt <laughs> Nagy! How could you? Let's go. And yeah, so of course I crushed the meeting. I stayed up all night studying those plays. It's like, man, this kid is locked in. We got ourselves a winner here. <laughs> As the process went on, I got a feeling that I was kind of going up in the draft. I had a couple of teams that said they were going to draft me, and I mean, that's true. Like, it's not like these coaches are making that up. I talked to them uh, during the draft process, and they were like, hey, if you're there, we're going we're gonna to take you. I kind of gave a little inside info to the, the Chiefs, and I was like, hey, if y'all let me go anywhere below, at the time, I didn't know about the Saints, but I was like, if y'all let me go 12 or below, I'm going to get drafted by someone else. You drafted yourself? And so I gave the Chiefs <laughs> a, little bit of in, a, little bit of, a little bit of info on that because I wanted to be here. Let's go! Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty sweet. What a jerk. Who? Um, Maggie? Mahomes. Just oh, yeah. rubbing it in. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great story. I, I, I had never heard that before, and that's bonkers to me because in the draft, there's no secrets. Everything comes out. So I, the fact that we've never heard that before yeah. is amazing. And so if we look back at it, the Chiefs traded up to 10 mm-hmm. with Buffalo, who I think took Tredavious White, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Uh, yes, they took sense. Tredavious White, who's awesome. Um, and the Chiefs traded over the Saints. And the Saints were at the time pretending that they were going to take a DB, who they ended up taking, Marshawn Lattimore, but they were going to take Mahomes. So basically, because Matt Nagy helped Mahomes cheat on the exam, the Chiefs ended up with a dynasty, and the Saints ended up still still Drew Brees. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. but and Nagy got and Mitch now Trubisky. they absolutely fucking stink. And the year that they stink, they're gonna their picks gonna go to the team that's ten and one right now. Yeah, something to think about. That's, that's another uh, quarterback that's oh. just healthy backup now. Yeah, what's it's going James. on with Jameis? Yeah, yeah, because it's not like Dalton's burning, uh, burning, uh, burning, 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 burning things. Down. Burning London Bridge down. Uh-huh. No, he is Burgie. most certainly not. Um, they. I think, you know, that's tough, and I think when 
you know, Jameis was in there, he wasn't healthy, and then he sits out like a month, and then Dalton kind of solidified things, played well some days, not as well other days. I just don't – I'm just not sure they want to make a change. Yeah. I mean, I just don't – they just – there has to be some sort of maybe confidence. I don't know what the right word is. Um, so they don't think Jameis is their future because Andy's right. not because he's old. And 80. Yeah. Andy. I don't, I, I, I don't think Jameis is the future, no. no also, for as bad as they've been, like, they're still – they could still win that division. Yeah. That's what a are crazy they, a game thing. back. Like, I mean, they yeah. win. Let's say they win Monday and it's Bucks, right? Yeah. Bucks, yep. Could win. Mm-hmm. And Dennis Allen has traditionally very well. been very good against yeah. Brady. Yep. Um, Except the playoffs. So they play okay there. Um, then they're then they're still in it. And I, I mean, I, you know, maybe at some point if they have to, they go to Jameis. And I personally would be curious to see what Jameis would do because he has had his moments. Um, but then other moments where you just scratch your head and you're like, come on, man. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, that's what I don't understand is, like, usually guys will find that happy medium between, like, chances to take and not. Sure. And Jameis kind of never really did. No. He was playing good at the beginning of last year before he got hurt. Yep. Yeah. He was playing pretty good, yeah. Uh, like five and two or something. Was it? Yeah. And They're then, you know, good, but yeah. the other thing is, like, those knee injuries are bad. Like, he had a multi-ligament knee injury. Like, it takes a while yeah. for people to come back from that. Uh, before we continue... My understanding is we need to give away things. Yes. Right. yes, we need to give so away. So I will cede the floor and let you guys show me how we give something away. All right. So we do this on every single Feel Good Friday. Yep. Hashtag PMS NFL Week 13. 13. That's hashtag PMS NFL Week 1, 3. Don't spell it out. No. Just 13. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is pick a winner from this weekend. Don't need to, you know, go by the spread or anything. Just need a winner straight up. So hashtag PMS NFL Week 13. Pick a winner from this weekend. Put your cash tag in the tweet. Pick a winner. If you correctly select the winner, you will be entered Mm -hmm. to potentially win $500. We will... Ten people will win... $500, $500, and I think we were saying what? We will double it if you, you Mr. Rap Sheet, can go it. down there and make, uh, let's say, three out of five putts. Yeah. This putting green Pretty has been a fickle Stuff. beast. A lot of people who play a lot of golf have not fared very well on it. So uh-huh. hashtag PMS NFL Week 13. Right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, 10 oh, people. I can't put. put your cash tag in there and who you think is going to win this weekend. Ten people will win if Rap Sheet sinks three out of five Correct. cuts. Wow. Twenty people will Either win. Either or whichever one. dollars Wherever you whichever behind one. the behind that that little fake hole there. Yeah, okay. that little yeah. yeah. Either hole. Every Cross time. Cross handed grip. Notice. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Look at those shoes. Yeah, the shoes are great. Shoes are nice. Sweet pump. Are you gonna pump them up to putt or there you, you go. Probably now, we're yeah. talking. Yeah. now we're talking yeah. rap. Well, much done, huh? Let's I mean, go. Every time we called you this year, you were golfing, so yeah, yeah you see. better. Yeah. Pays off here. Ooh, close, but no cigar okay. on the okay. first one. Could make zero. Three out of four. Oh, there, it's possible. That's happened a couple times this week. Yeah, more than a couple. There it is. That's the stroke. That's the. Oh! oh! He's, got, he's got to make sense. Okay, got to run the table here, <laughs> Rashi. You can do this. Just lock in here. What do you say? For Columbia. Boom, there's one. Oh, oh wow. man! Okay. I mean, at least try and make two. Yeah, you can't I mean, just you, go you over. You can't go over. What but, if I, I mean, go the, over though? Well, then, then you look like an asshole. Yeah, you're over right now. I, so like, I will just be. <laughs> well, that I mean, you're give, they're good rolls, Raps. We'll give you that. Ooh, they're just, you gotta know. hit it a little bit. You gotta oh. hit it here. Oh. Come on. So you come can, on, Raps. We just two we can not a bad putt. We can just tell that you go for greens and regulation, then two putt pars. That's who you are. Boom! There it is. There it is. Well done. There it is. Not over. All right, so only 10 people are going to win, but hashtag PMS NFL Week 13. Pick a winner from this weekend and put your cash tag in the tweet. Uh, if your selection is correct, we will randomly select 10 people yeah. to win $500. Wow. I cannot believe that. Although I have to say, I'm glad that I hit the last one because now I can walk off a winner. Yeah, Boom. that's true. Absolutely. And this week especially, there's been people go 0 for 5, 0 for 10. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's been a tough week on the green, so it I'm really impressed has. you even hit one. I mean, I was planning to go until I went, and I would have stayed there forever, so I guess I'm glad I made the fifth instead of the 14th. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Silver lining. Like hey, mm-hmm. I, like your, I like your thinking there, Rapture. God. 
I do miss the golf course, though. I'm not going to oh, lie. Oh, who yeah. doesn't? I know. We'll be back out there. I too. drove When I drove by here, yeah. which, again, people should not visit. No. Um, there's a golf course right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, right here meaning a couple miles away. A couple yeah. miles away. But, mm-hmm. but on still, the way. yeah, it's on the way. Yeah, and that's a nice track. little course. Yeah. It is, like... I know, like we're we're all business here, and I would never want to talk about something non-football. But hey, I played in a uh, frostbite open on Saturday. Oh, nice! Oh. It was freezing. Oh, winter coat, winter hat. Yeah, um, it was great. And uh, I have moved on from golf during the season because you get so focused. Like, even Tuesdays, which is my off day, mm-hmm. I'm just like tired and like process. My brain's still going. Yeah. And then I played golf Saturday, and I'm like, God, I missed it so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll so, be there soon again. You know, the only worry, the only problem with that is football's over then. You and know, when golf too. season kicks mm-hmm. up, football's over, free agency's over. Except that's a weird thing is like it doesn't because the draft comes up. Like even, like even after the season, yeah, yeah which I really love the games over until right until like, the draft, May June. Yeah, Re- really, like you wake up the morning after the draft and you're like, all right, like it's over. But now it's over. Yeah. After the like after the Super Bowl, I don't wake up and I'm like, oh, I miss games because I wake up and it's like. Who's getting tagged? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's everyone going? Exactly. And like, free agency last year was crazy. I'm, I'm glad I made it through. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had trades and crazy stuff like uh, Tyreek Hill gets traded in sure. late March. Which Devontae. Like, Devontae. Yeah. I mean, the Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers on the same day. Yeah, that was like, Russ on got, like the first day of the offseason yep. pretty much, wasn't it? When Russ got traded and Rodgers resigned, yeah. Vaughn. Rodgers was mad at me. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he was. Yeah, Vaughn. It's a great point. Vaughn was Khalil Mack. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Khalil. That free agency was nuts. There were a Khalil lot of... Mack. That's right. God. Yeah, people. Everyone always uh, get. You know, fans love free agency, and I love it too. But being in it is like the most stressful thing. Yeah. Literally, because you you have no idea. Yeah, no doubt. At any it. any freaking moment, I was sitting down with. This is not to brag or anything. Okay. I was. But. Talking to Spike Lee. Oh, okay. shit. Wow. Knicks fan? Uh, no. He was uh, working on a documentary, and he was talking okay. to me for it. Of course. And uh, so um, I'm sitting down with him, and it's for an hour, and I'm, like, getting, you know, it's he, he asked, like, real pointed questions, like, definitely didn't care about, like, being too, like, butting in or, like, what like, he was asking, like, Spike, real hard Spike questions. Lee, yeah. Yeah. yeah, come on. And, like, obviously, like, ask whatever the hell you want. I don't care. <laughs> and then I get a text on my phone. As opposed to a text in my brain. Sure. Um, Neuralink. And it says, right. And it says, uh, pretty sure Tyreek Hill is getting traded. I'm like, what? And like, he's getting traded to the, uh, I think the person said Dolphins or, or, or Packers. No, the person said Dolphins or Packers. Oh. And I think shit. that was Could wrong. You fucking imagine. I think the Packers part was wrong. Yeah, I'd but say. I But I get it. <laughs> I get it with like 20 minutes to go in the interview. And. Spike's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I will finish, but like, second. I don't know. And so I had to like finish with him and then get done, make calls. Ended up reporting that, I think something like, you know, the Chiefs are fielding calls mm-hmm. and might trade him or something. Then he got traded later in the day. But like that 20 minutes sitting with Spike Lee, having to talk to him while knowing that I had like a burning fire in my pocket yeah, was correct. crazy. Did you ask him why he hasn't made a good movie in like 10 years? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Inside Man. Whoa. He's doing a documentary. Yeah, Inside Man came out in like 2010s. Great movie, movie though. <laughs> Still plays. I'm not familiar with Inside Man. Oh, right. oh. Watch, Watch it on the way, it on the so way home. So Fine Bomb was right. You are a fucking greenhorn dip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, watch that. Guy interviews Spike Lee hasn't even fucking seen Inside. <laughs> I've seen like Do the Right Thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, well, Do the Right Crooklyn, Thing and watch Crooklyn fucking was Inside good. Man. That's good. One. Crooklyn had a great soundtrack. Well, all Spike Lee's movies have great soundtracks. Yeah, it's true. a staple. Um, I think we're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I think we yeah. are. I mean, I just want to say, Rap, you did a great job. Nice job, Ian. I did not think. I did not think this was going to go well, <laughs> and I thought you were going to be a big steaming pile of shit, but <laughs> you really got the job done today, and I just want to give yeah. you your flyers how you're still here. That's the best compliment he's ever said, yeah, by the really way. Actually, wow. yeah. I'm going to print that out and frame it. He really yeah, normally tells AJ to go fuck himself. He does. I do, yeah. So. Wow. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot believe that this all happened. This has been an honor. Um, not even joking. Can't even joke about Thank that. You. It has literally been an honor. It's fun. You guys are awesome. You made it very easy for me. If I get to do this again, maybe I'll hit the the kind of drop, drop thing. Drop. Yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe I won't screw it up like I did twice. That's it. 
I guess we're done. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you guys for everything. Thank you for. I assume people watched, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Actually. Well, we'll see. I we'll guess. check. Yeah, we'll, we'll check out. the numbers. We'll check. Um, thank you, Pat, for letting me do this. Um, watch him on game day tomorrow. Yeah. Boom. Hopefully, talking about me. Maybe. There's a chance you get brought up. <laughs> you think? Mon- maybe. Well, it's not tomorrow. Doubtful. It's a doubtful. Overreaction Monday. Yeah. We'll get, oh, we'll get maybe. We'll talk about you. But watch day. him on game day uh, and watch this show all the places it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you guys very much. Feel good this Friday Hell like yeah. we are right now. And boom. Goodbye. Goodbye.